keep your most valuable possessions protected player. by bundling. You know, being a part of that university and still having the friendships that I have with those guys, it just it was a perfect fit. And that was probably the reason why I had a lot of success early. Uh, because I just didn't put any kind of expectations on myself. I just wanted to go out there and just do whatever I could to help the university win basketball games and, like you said, as a person, just be the best person I can possibly be as well. While Antoine Jameson was reliving his college days at Carolina, Clemson was busy beating Arizona. Now a final from Los Angeles. Clemson, 77, Arizona, 72. The Wildcats, the uh, first two seed to be bounced out of the event as Clemson has a spot in the Elite Eight for the first time since 1980. And the Tigers await the winner of Carolina and Alabama, our next game, set to tip off shortly before 10 p.m. So, wow, a big upset already tonight. And the question right now is, can Carolina hold serve as a top seed? It looks like UConn's going to get by San Diego State. There's another two seed on the floor later tonight with Iowa State taking on Illinois. So we'll preview all that a little later on with the North Carolina Farm Bureau scoreboard. Right now, let's get back to Antoine Jamison, whose career lasted better than 15 years in the NBA. But he told me the handful of seasons he spent in college provided the foundation for the rest of his personal and professional life. Before I had kids, I mean, those three years at Carolina was probably my proudest moments and um the most important thing those three years molded me into the man that i became on the basketball court but most importantly off the basketball court the things i've learned uh at carolina uh not through just dean smith teaching me the x's and o's but teaching me how to be uh, a professional teaching me how to be a better person most importantly a better son a better brother a better friend those are the things that I learned in those three years at the University of North Carolina. And as you have kids, um, when they leave the household, the most important thing you entrust in, especially if you have a kid that's playing a sport, you entrust in uh, their livelihood, you entrust in them uh, getting prepared for the world. And the University of North Carolina prepared me to succeed at all levels, uh, on the court, off the court. And I agree with you, those three years have had the biggest impact of my life. Uh, me being a father, me being a, a husband, a friend, all of those things uh, was molded in the foundation. Of course, my mom and dad did an unbelievable job uh, before I left for college. Uh, and they still continue to do an unbelievable job. But those three years at Carolina, I just I can't compare them to, like I said, anything other than uh, my five kids who I love to death, and that was like the only other accomplishments that can even come close to what I've been able to do in those three years and, of course, 16 years in the NBA as well. And that's former Tar Heel Antoine Jamison spent a little bit of his uh, career out on the West Coast with the Lakers and Clippers and the Tar Heels in L.A. tonight to take on Alabama. Again, Clemson has just beaten Arizona 77-70 to the Tigers into the regional final and will face either the Tar Heels or Tide on Saturday. We'll run through the rest of the action that's going on tonight inside the NCAA tournament and we'll also run through a big night tomorrow as well as some uh, late-breaking coaching news around the ACC and we've got part two of the Continental Tire Coaches Corner to get to our keys to the game. You get the idea. We've still got a lot. And after this next time out, we'll hear from Alabama head coach Nate Oates. So uh, a lot of reasons to stay tuned. It's already been a wild Thursday in the NCAA tournament. We'll see how crazy things get between the Tar Heels and Tide when we come back from Learfield. North Carolina's 26 electric cooperatives are partnering with outstanding educators to bring creative learning to life through the Bright Ideas Grant Program. These grants have positive positively impacted millions of students in all 100 counties in the Tar Heel State. Grant applications will open April 1st. Teachers, if you have a bright idea for energizing learning in your classroom, apply now by contacting your local electric cooperative or visiting ncbrightideas.com. North Carolina Electric Cooperatives, powering a brighter future. What does Carolina basketball have in common with the Honda Accord? More trophies than Duke. The award-winning 2023 Honda Accord. Named to car and driver's 10 best list a record 37 times. Part of Honda's impressive full lineup. Accord, Civic, CRV, HRV, Pilot, Pass.
Passport, Odyssey, and Ridgeline. With available Honda Sensing, Apple CarPlay, and more. Because winning fans deserve a winning car. Find one now at your Honda dealers of the Carolinas. At Reed's Jewelers, we know that the rules of engagement were made to be broken. So don't settle for the first ring you see in the case. When you put a ring on it, make the moment your own with something that's just as unique as your love. Whether you're going big, keeping it subtle, or finding a happy medium, we're here to help you say I do with a one-of-a-kind design. Because doing things your way is what makes them mean everything. Reed's Jewelers, an official partner of Tar Heel Sports. Visit your local Reed's Jewelers in-store or online at reeds.com to chat with an expert. This is the Sweet 16 on the Tar Heel Sports Network from Learfield. Together, that's how we stay in the game, ready to play. As one great team, UNC Health is keeping you well by bringing renewed focus, approach, and dedicated services close to you. Exceptional care is what you and your family deserve. Together, let's put points on the board for life well played. Team up with UNC Health, proud partner of Carolina Athletics. For any surface and every season, Continental Tire is the smart choice in tires. From ultra-high performance tires like the Extreme Contact Sport to passenger touring tires to all-terrain light truck tires like the Terrain Contact AT, Continental has a tire that gives you confidence no matter the road conditions. Whether you're looking for summer, all-season, or winter tires, Continental Tire has something to fit your needs. Visit ContinentalTire.com to find your ideal tire. Continental Tire, a proud partner of Carolina Athletics. Aw, shucks. The game's on TV, but I can't listen to the call of my favorite team broadcasters. Never fear. Sync My Game is here. Uh, Sync My Game? Yes, Sync My Game. If you have a DVR and streaming device, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. It's never been easier to hear the impassioned voices of your favorite radio crew synced with the TV. Wow, uh, thank you, Mr. Just remember, SyncMyGame.com. Carolina Basketball is brought to you by Coca-Cola. Is Coke Zero Sugar the best Coke ever? Take a taste. This is the Reed's Jewelers pregame show. Dave Nathan welcoming you back to business as it appears our official tip time now will be 9.54, so about 25 minutes from right now is when Carolina and Alabama will tip off. Big news of the night, Clemson, a winner over Arizona, 77-72. The Tigers advance into the Elite Eight. The Wildcats bounced in the round of 16. As we get back to tonight's game between the Heels and Tide, after beating a Michigander in Tom Izzo, the Tar Heels face another Midwesterner tonight in Nate Oates. The Tide's head coach grew up in Wisconsin, which is also where he began his coaching career at the Division III level. He later became a high school head coach outside of Detroit. That was before the University of Buffalo hired Oates to be an assistant on Bobby Hurley's staff. When Hurley left for Arizona State, Oates was hired to lead the program. Buffalo would go on to win the MAC twice and rack up a 69-13 record in his final two years. Then in 2019, Alabama hired Oates, and soon after, Bama began a string of four consecutive trips to the NCAA tournament. That's after not making a single appearance since 2004. There's no doubt Alabama's pointed in the right direction, while Oates, uh, Oates' focus rather is directed at Carolina. North Carolina's one of the best teams in the country. Number one seed, deservedly so. They got a lot of talented guys, I and mean, we've got our hands full. Our defense is going to have to be a lot better than it's been most of the year. I thought thought we had a good defensive game against Grand Canyon. Our offense. Wasn't very good. We're going to need both of them together uh, playing well to be able to beat North Carolina. But I, I do like where our guys' heads are at. Uh, Latrell's being reevaluated by the medical staff every day, and he's basically on a day-to-day -day basis now. So I'm not, I'm not sure if he'll be available or not until uh, they let us know tomorrow. So uh, other than him, we're healthy. Uh, obviously, and Davin's out. Um, but, you know, I, I think our guys are locked in. It should be a fun game. North Carolina 
likes to get up and down the floor, as do we. So it's going to be a pretty fast-paced game, I would I would think. We're going to have to do a good job on Baycott. You know, we've played some of the best bigs in the country, so we've had some experience. You know, we played Edie, Balo, Kalkbrenner back-to-back, played P.J. Hall, Clemson, played, you know, Tolu Smith at Mississippi State. I think, you know, we've played some of these bigger guys. Some we've guarded better than others, but we we're going to have to have a, a plan for Baycott. And then obviously R.J. Davis is one of the best scorers in the country. You know, him and Sears, I think, are 11th and 13th. They're, like, right there together. And he's super talented. So, you, you know, you can't just have a game plan for Baycott. you got a plan for Davis. Cormac Ryan hit seven threes against us. He was 7-9 from three in the tournament against us when he's at Notre Dame. Ingram just went 5-6 from three last game. So they've got multiple guys that can shoot it, score it inside. That's why they're number one seed. So... We, uh, we've got our hands full, we know it, but I think our guys are locked in and ready to go. And that's Alabama head basketball coach Nate Oates as the Tide and Tar Heels tangle with a tip-off coming at 9.54 as uh, there's a spot in the Elite Eight coming up against Clemson on Saturday. The Tigers have beaten Arizona 77-72. We'll recap that game, preview a few others. And again, get to that late-breaking coaching and injury news upon our return. This is the Reeds Jewelers pregame show from Learfield. And we're back with the action. Coke Zero Sugar might be the best Coke ever? That's right, Jim. With an irresistible taste and zero sugar, Coke Zero Sugar is a must-try for any sports fan. So make sure you... Wait, Jim, I didn't mean try it right now. We're still on the air. Mmm, <sighs> best Coke ever? Take a taste, Jen. Really? No, not right now, Jen. We got a game to call. We know there's only one team you want to watch, and Valley Sports is the place to get your Tar Heels. Join Valley Sports every week as we dive into the heart of the action with exclusive interviews with coaches and players across UNC Athletics. We live every incredible highlight and get in-depth breakdowns from each game. Watch Carolina Insider on Valley Sports South every Monday at 3 and stream it on the Valley Sports app. Valley Sports, home of the only team you want to watch. It's bow time. <laughs> Sometimes the craving for Bojangles Supremes is so strong, you just got to have them. Even when your gas tank is on empty and Bojangles is still 10 miles down the highway. Nothing beats the flavor of Bojangles Juicy Golden Supremes, especially when they're part of a perfect combo with four boldly seasoned chicken Supremes, a made-from-scratch biscuit, fixin', and some legendary iced tea. The only thing that can satisfy your hunger is that delicious southern flavor. So when the craving is supreme, put the pedal to the metal. It's bow time. <laughs> This is the Tar Heel Sports Network from Learfield. Facing divorce or family law matters? Count on Wake Family Law Group. Led by board-certified family law specialists, we approach your divorce or custody case with integrity and meticulous attention to detail, aiming for positive outcomes for you. Rely on us to advocate for your interests and help you move forward. Serving the Triangle and surrounding counties, learn more at www.wakefamilylawgroup.com. Wake Family Law Group, your future, our priority. What does Carolina basketball have in common with the Honda Accord? More trophies than Duke. The award-winning 2023 Honda Accord. Named to Car and Driver's 10 Best List a record 37 times. Part of Honda's impressive full lineup. Accord, Civic, CRV, HRV, Pilot, Passport, Odyssey, and Ridgeline. With available Honda Sensing, Apple CarPlay, and more. Because winning fans deserve a winning car. Find one now at your Honda dealers of the Carolinas. Your one stop for all college sports is the Varsity app and the brand new Varsity Network website, thevarsitynetwork.com. Keep up with your favorite teams and the rest of college sports, no matter where you are, with thevarsitynetwork.com. Live and on demand broadcasts, your favorite college centric podcasts, with stories and video around college sports and your favorite teams. Be sure to download the Varsity app and check out the brand new Varsity Network website, thevarsitynetwork.com. Jewelers pregame show continues as Carolina and Alabama 
less than 20 minutes away from getting tipped off in L.A. where the big dance has already thrown us another curveball on the North Carolina Farm Bureau scoreboard. Helping you is what they do best. Clemson, the sixth seed in the West Bracket, has just taken down the two-seed Arizona, 77-72. Chase Hunter with 18 points to lead all scores. The Tigers also got 17 from P.J. Hall, 14 from Ian Shefflin, and it's Clemson heading into the Elite Eight, shooting better than 49% in tonight's game and knocking off Arizona. Caleb Love finishes 5 of 18 from the floor, 0 of 9 from three-point land, 13 points for the Wildcats who are bounced from the tournament. Other game in progress right now. 227 left to play in the second half. UConn 77, San Diego State 50. So it looks like the Huskies are moving on to the Elite Eight and will face either Illinois or Iowa State. That game is supposed to get started around 10.09. Again, our tip-off, Carolina, Alabama, 954. Speaking of that matchup, looks more and more like Latrell Weitzel, who's in the concussion protocol, uh, will likely not play tonight for Alabama. He scores about nine points per game, so that's not an insignificant loss for uh, the Crimson Tide, who could be down one of their top scores. Uh, around the ACC, Pat Kelsey has been hired by Louisville to be its next head coach. Kelsey most recently finished a three-year stint at Charleston, going 75-27. and 27. Louisville, by contrast, over the last two years, 12 and 52 under the leadership of Kenny Payne. Tomorrow's action begins at 7.09 with NC State taking on Marquette in the South Regional Semifinals. Gonzaga and Purdue tip off at 7.39. Then at 9.39 on Friday night, Duke plays Houston. That's in the South. And the 10.09 tip tomorrow in the Midwest pits Creighton versus Tennessee. We'll pump the brakes here on the Reach Jewelers pregame show. Come back and hear from Jones and Coach Davis. We've also got our keys to the game as we close in on the tip-off between Carolina and Alabama in the NCAA tournament from Learfield. That to-do list you have needs one more thing. Chill. It's an easy thing to do. Just crack open an ice-cold Coors Light and chill. Take the afternoon off and binge watch anything. Go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours. Who's counting anyways? Or hang out with just your dog, because you've had enough human interaction this week. Whatever you do, do it with a Coors Light. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2024 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. Did you know that your unused medications could end up in the wrong hands? It's important to keep your medication secure in a locked location, such as a locking box or locking cabinet. When it's time to dispose of them, safety and properly dispose of old, expired, or unused meds by using an at-home disposal product or a medication disposal box in your community. Don't miss out on medication take-back events happening near you. Don't let anyone take what's yours. Lock your meds. Be aware. Don't share. Learn more at lockyourmeds.org slash nc. Texting while driving takes your eyes off the road for an average of five seconds. That's like driving the length of a basketball court three times with your eyes closed. Research shows you are three times more likely to get into an accident when distracted by a cell phone. Trusted Choice Independent Insurance Agents urge you and your families to put down your phone. Every day in the U.S., more than nine people are killed and 1,000 injured in crashes involving a distracted driver. Let's have a hands-free NC. Brought to you by Trusted Choice Independent Insurance Agents of North Carolina. Learn more at trustedchoice.com slash heels. This is the Sweet 16 on the Tar Heel Sports Network from Learfield. They're not just the Tar Heels, they're your Tar Heels. Customize your Wells Fargo debit card or open an account today to show your Carolina pride with every purchase. Get started at wellsfargo.com backslash Tar Heels. Wells Fargo is proud to be the official bank of Carolina Athletics. Copyright 2023, Wells Fargo Bank, N.A., member FDIC. Do you hear that? That is the sound of BMW performance without a single piston or cylinder. A generation of all-electric vehicles designed and built like no other. The BMW iX, i7, and i4 revolutionize every drive into a thrilling opportunity to feel the pure rush of BMW 100% electric. But isn't that what you'd expect from the ultimate electric driving machine? Visit TriangleBMWDealers.com today for exceptional offers on the BMW Electrified Fleet. 
Which schools will take home the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup for the 2023-24 college athletic season? You can follow the standings of your favorite school or alma mater at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. That's thedirectorscup.com and L Directors Cup on Twitter. Trophies will be awarded in June 2024 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. This is the Sweet 16. Davis ticket. Go! Oh, lobbed it up to Winners for the highlight. What a finish. Carolina basketball is brought to you by Wells Fargo, official retail bank sponsor of Carolina Athletics. This is the Reeds Jewelers pregame show. And our postseason coverage of the Tar Heels proudly presented by Triangle BMW dealers. At BMW, they only make one thing, the ultimate driving machine. Visit TriangleBMW.com to find the dealer closest to you. Again, Clemson has beaten Arizona 77-72 to advance into the Elite Eight. We're waiting on that UConn-San Diego State game to go final. The Huskies, though, appear ticketed into the Elite Eight. And just as I say that, 82-52 is how it ends. So the Huskies beat the Aztecs by 30 to advance into the next round. We'll advance into the next round of the Continental Tire Coaches Corner, brought to you by Continental Tire. It's the smart choice in tires, and for a dealer near you, just go to ContinentalTire.com. Second consecutive season that Carolina and Alabama will meet. A lot more on the line this time, though, as they meet in the round of 16 of the NCAA tournament. I'm inside the Continental Tire Coaches Corner alongside the head coach of the Tar Heels, Hubert Davis. Coach Alabama, a team that is known for its three-point shooting. They take a bunch, they make a bunch. What are some of the challenges defensively in facing a team that, that has the style like Alabama does? Yeah, you know, you mentioned their style, and, you know, from an offensive standpoint, it's pretty straightforward. They want threes, they want layups and dunks, and they want to get to to the free throw line and so you know for us defensively we can't give them those three areas and so we've got to do a, a really good job of contesting their threes because they shoot so many you can't take it away but uh, being able to keep them out of the paint be disciplined defensively not putting them on the free throw line those are things that I think we have done and, and we're we're going to have to do really well against them I really also think you know what plays a huge part in how you play defensively is how you play on the offensive end and so for us to make shots to get good shots for us to get to the free throw line and take care of the basketball that means they're always going up against a set defense of us and you know all year we've been a pretty good defensive team Mark Sears is a terrific player. Second straight game that you faced uh, another uh, one of the elite guards in the country. Uh, faced Tyson Walker, of course, from Michigan State. What are some of the challenges that Sears presents, and, and how can you try and bother him tonight? Well, you know, he, he can score in a number of different areas. I mean, obviously, he can shoot from three, off the catch, off the dribble. We've talked before of, you know, there's very few players in the country that can do that at an elite level. R.J. Davis is one of those, and his also his ability to be able to finish in the lane he's left-handed he's he's a gifted passer so those driving kick plays he's the guy that usually is the one distributing and so and he's tough and he's aggressive and you know you know we've just got to do a really good job of making all of his cuts all of his catches all of his shots very hard and very difficult and then when he's playing defense, we got to make him play defense. And so um, we're, 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 we're excited about playing him. And he played well against us last year when we played Alabama. And um, he's had a terrific season. Carolina and Alabama with a, a berth in the round of eight on the line tonight in Los Angeles. Coach, as always, thank you for your time and best of luck. Thanks, Jones. I appreciate it. And that was part two of the Continental Tire Coach's Corner, which will send us to our keys to the game. But a quick note here, we, we qualified Latrell White till is probably likely out during the North Carolina Farm Bureau scoreboard. He's now officially out, so Alabama loses a guy that's good for usually about nine points per game due to uh, the concussion protocol. So uh, tough news for the Tide, but the game goes on, and our keys to the game is brought to you by your Honda dealer of the Carolinas today. Take your Tar Heels tailgate to the next level with a new Honda. And Jones, Z, for all the talk about offense, I'm going to go the total other direction and say my key comes down to defense. And it's because both teams want to play fast. And especially on the perimeter, 
If this game comes down to some short possessions offensively, the Tar Heels have to hit the boards, start the transition game, and get out and run. Defense has to be the precursor to putting the ball in the basket, Jones. You know, I'm going to go with what I talked about earlier, and that's the quality of shots that Alabama takes. Carolina's defense has been predicated on forcing the opposition into difficult two-point shots a large majority of this season. Alabama's entire offensive philosophy is not, is designed to avoid the exact shots that Carolina wants them to take. So, Tyler, Carolina wants Alabama to take tough twos. Alabama wants to take threes and layups. Which style is more successful? That's going to have a good chance to win the ball game. So I agree both, you know, got to take away those threes, but I'm going to go with offensively, we got to get the shots we want. They're going to try to create chaos, to create turnovers, try to force you into quick shots. We got to make sure we take good quality threes or we get in the paint and try to get good quality shots in the paint. All right, those are our keys to the game. Two games already in the books from around the NCAA tournament. Clemson defeats Arizona 77-72, and the Tigers await the winner. Pre-game showed the extended version, but the good news is the tip-off between Carolina and Alabama right around the corner. Jones and Z will have the starting lineups and the play-by-play -play when we come back after this from Learfield. Looking for the perfect match? Oh, yeah. Look at you. Find a vehicle you'll love at the Toyota Ready, Set, Go event. Toyota, let's go places. Lease a new 2024 Toyota RAV4 LE for $329 a month for 36 months. Offer valid through April 1st, 2024. Well-qualified lessees with approved credit through Southeast Toyota Finance. 3628 to its signing. No security deposit with select equipment. 350 disposition fee excludes tax tag, registration, title, and dealer fees. See dealer for details. Tournament time is here, but it's never too early to prepare for North Carolina's toughest opponent, hurricane season. The Tar Heel State is no stranger to hurricanes. That's why the North Carolina Department of Insurance wants you to get storm ready now. Create an emergency kit, make a home inventory to document your possessions, and talk to your agent about flood insurance. Having a plan is key when disaster strikes. For more information on what to do before, during, and after a storm, visit ncdoi.gov slash disaster. ncdoi.gov slash disaster. At Reed's Jewelers, we know that the rules of engagement were made to be broken. So don't settle for the first ring you see in the case. When you put a ring on it, make the moment your own with something that's just as unique as your love. Whether you're going big, keeping it subtle, or finding a happy medium, we're here to help you say I do with a one-of-a-kind design. Because doing things your way is what makes them mean everything. Reed's Jewelers, an official partner of Tar Heel Sports. Visit your local Reed's Jewelers in-store or online at reeds.com to chat with an expert. This is Carolina Basketball from Learfield. Together, that's how we stay in the game, ready to play. As one great team, UNC Health is keeping you well by bringing renewed focus, approach, and dedicated services close to you. Exceptional care is what you and your family deserve. Together, let's put points on the board for life well played. Team up with UNC Health, proud partner of Carolina Athletics. For any surface and every season, Continental Tire is the smart choice in tires. From ultra-high performance tires like the Extreme Contact Sport to passenger touring tires to all-terrain light truck tires like the Terrain Contact AT, Continental has a tire that gives you confidence no matter the road conditions. Whether you're looking for summer, all-season, or winter tires, Continental Tire has something to fit your needs. Visit ContinentalTire.com to find your ideal tire. Continental Tire, a proud partner of Carolina Athletics. Aw, shucks. The game's on TV, but I can't listen to the call of my favorite team broadcasters. Never fear. Sync My Game is here. Uh, Sync My Game? Yes, Sync My Game. If you have a DVR and streaming device, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. It's never been easier to hear the impassioned voices of your favorite radio crew synced with the TV. Wow, uh, thank you, Mr. Just remember, SyncMyGame.com. <laughs> Lights are off here in Los Angeles as we prepare for the second regional semifinal to be played on the West Coast this evening. Clemson stuns Arizona 77-72 in the first. So the Tigers await the winner 
of Carolina and Alabama. Jones Angel, Tyler Zettler here courtside with you in L.A. We're joined by Ben Alexander, our chief network engineer. Adam Lucas helping us out with statistical work. You've heard from Dave Nathan in our Tariel Sports Network studio as well as John Essek in the studio as well. 13th all-time or 14th all-time meeting between these two, including fourth in the NCAA tournament. Carolina leads the three previous matchups in this event two to one. That'll wrap up the Reeds Jewelers pregame show. Visit your local Reeds Jewelers or Reeds.com and take us to the starting lineups presented by Coors Light. Coors Light made to chill, an official beer of the Tar Heels. We'll start with Alabama, the four seed in the West region. They defeated College of Charleston 109 to 96 and Grand Canyon 72 61. Those games were in Spokane, Washington to advance here to the round of 16. Nate Oates in his fifth year as the head coach of the Tide has won 68.5% of his games in those five years. The Tide runs a three-guard starting five. Mark Sears, the leading scorer in the SEC. A sporting news, second team All-America, averaging 21.5 points per game, shoots better than 50% from the floor and better than 43% from three. He's joined back there by Rylan Griffin, 6'6", sophomore from Dallas, 11 points per game on the season. And Aaron Estrada, 6'3", graduate transfer from Hofstra. He's also played at St. Peter's and Oregon. He averages 13.5 points per game, but he's Alabama's leading rebounder, assist man, and stealer of the basketball. Grant Nelson, a North Dakota State transfer, the 6'11 senior, one of the two front court players for Alabama, a stretch for 11.5 or 11.4 points per game. And Nick Pringle making his 14th start of the season, the 6'10 senior, is from Seabrook, South Carolina. He replaces another guard that normally starts, Latrell Reitzel Jr. So Alabama adds another front court player into the starting five instead of Reitzel, who is out with a upper body injury. Now for the Tar Heels, they're the number one seed in the West region. They finished the regular season, or finished their uh, portion of the year coming into this event at 29 and 7, 17 and 3 is where they finished at ACC play for first place in the conference. Hubert Davis in his third year leading his alma mater, 78 and 30 in those three years. Carolina defeated Wagner, 90 to 62, and Michigan State, 85 69. Those games in Charlotte to advance to this portion of the tournament. No changes for Carolina. Elliot Cano and R.J. Davis in the backcourt. Cormac Ryan, Harrison Ingram, and Armando Baycott up front. Let's get to the Duncan uniform report. Let's get back to buzzer beaters. Blocks, bounce passes, and most of all, Duncan. Welcome back, Tar Heel fans. America runs on Duncan. Carolina is the better seed, and it's home white with Carolina blue. Numbers, letters, and trim. The Argyle down the side of the jerseys and shorts. Alabama in the crimson road uniforms. White numbers, letters, and trim. Michael Reed, John Gaffney, Stephen Anderson, the three officials. The only one that Carolina has seen this year is John Gaffney. He was one of the officials for the UConn game, the state game in Raleigh, and the Georgia Tech game in Atlanta. Michael Reed to throw the ball in the air, kind of angled that throw towards Alabama. That allowed Pringle to slap it into the backcourt, and the Crimson Tide will have the basketball first. It is Estrada on the low right block, gets free from R.J. Davis, curls around and hits a quick floater to give Alabama a quick two points, not even 15 seconds in it to the ball game. Great draw up, really tight pick and roll, uh, tough to guard. Harrison Ingram out on the perimeter for Carolina, hands off to Cadeau. I'm not even sure who's guarding Cadeau. They were so far off of him. He drove to the right elbow and he knocked in the jumper. Cadeau pass cut through the lane. They lost him on the cut. He was able to come back around. Nobody around him knocked down the jump shot. Estrada guarded by R.J. Davis. Tarles have Cormac Ryan guarding Sears at the moment. Estrada fires up a three in and out. Nelson with the rebound and he's fouled going back up by Harrison Ingram. Alabama, not a terrible rebounding team by any stretch. They average just under 40 rebounds per game. A lot of those rebounds, as you can imagine, with longer shots are longer. Nobody averages more than five and a half rebounds individually, but a big one early for Nelson, and he'll have two free throws, the first of which is good. Now with uh, with the substitution here, you know, Pringle starting, they're going to be a lot bigger than they usually are. Yeah. You know, they're not somebody, you know, with Rainwright or Raincell out, he's not going to be they're usually smaller, more versatile. They're going to be a lot bigger with less shooters. Let's line up. Both free throws good by Grant Nelson. He's an 81% shooter. Alabama, a good free throw shooting team. 
at better than 77%. Again, Alabama is dropping so far off Cadeau. He's able to get into the mid-range for another open jumper. Misses that one. I think Nelson was actually guarding him. It was several is. feet off of him as a scooping layup is no good on the other side by Pringle. Carolina pushes it the other way, down 4-2, to two, but Ingram, oh, Ingram has a shot of race. Thought he had an open layup in transition, but Nelson recovered and blocked the shot away. On the other side, Estrada, big Euro step into the paint, no good. Rebound slapped out to Cormac Ryan. He tried to pitch it ahead to R.J. Davis, and looks like nobody touched it. It just went out of bounds as Ryan tried the push-ahead pass. That went over the left sideline. So a little sloppy to start. Yep. You know, R.J. trying to run out there, being contested. Uh, Ryan just threw it a little too far ahead of him. Uh, just got to clean it up a little bit. So it remains 4-2 Alabama. Each team has a field goal. Alabama has two free throws in addition to that. Sears on the perimeter, drives to the right corner, penetrates in, is passed in the middle of the paint, taken away by Baycott. Tariel's on the run, going from left to right. Ingram to Cadeau, back to Ingram on the right side. He'll have to slow it down. Cross-court pass goes to R.J. Davis. Pump fake for three. His teardrop runner is good on the left baseline. Great job. Nelson got lost. Had to close out to R.J. Shot fake. Got to low floater. But the pace of this game is fast. We anticipated it being that way, and it's lived up to that in the first two minutes. 4-4 the score, but quickly these two teams have moved up and down the floor. Sears gets a big screen to get to the free throw line. Kicks it out to Estrada. Hard drive. Stops. Pivot. Sends it out for an open three by Ryland Griffin, which is good. Great play by Estrada. Able to get downhill. RJ tried to come over to help. Uh, able to pass it out to his man and knock down the three. Griffin's first three. He's a good three-point shooter. One of many on this Alabama team. Ingram in the post left side. Just outside the lane. Trying to back in against Estrada. Loops a pass to Cadeau. Left alone for three. Got it. Made it. Cadeau had made one of his last 16 from three. 0 of 4 in the tournament. But he rattles that one in to tie the game back up at 7. Again, he was unguarded on the play. And Nelson standing in the middle of the lane. He was wide open. Griffin going to try and drive on R.J. Davis. Has the ball tipped away by R.J. into the hands of Baycock. Quickly back to Davis. Coming up the left side of the court. Pitch ahead to Ingram. Stutter step. Drifts to the left corner. will have to reset. Out to R.J. Davis who will walk it to the center jump circle to set up the half court for Carolina. Davis gets a screen from Baycott. High hedge by Alabama. Baycott has it. Down low to Cadeau. Out to Cormac Ryan for three. Great job. By, great cut by Cadeau. Baycott hit him on the back cut. They collapsed onto him. He hit it out to Ryan for the three. Back-to-back -to -back threes for Carolina. Has the heels up 10-7. Sears dishes off to Pringle. Gets it right back. Ryan working hard to stay in front of him. Sears to the left baseline. Ryan hounding him defensively. Sears dribbling it off his foot. Into the hands of R.J. Davis. He'll go down the other way. Hard contact. No whistle. Cadeau chases down the rebound, though. He'll work it back around. Ends up left corner to Ingram. He'll slow it down. Ingram dribbling. He's going to go against Nelson. Spins baseline and lays it home. Great move by Ingram out of the corner. Taking two hard dribbles to the middle. Nelson jumped high, spun back for the left-handed layup. Great pace to play. Great to see Cadeau hustling. Able to get that rebound off RJ's transition and miss. It's an 8-0 Carolina run. Heels lead at 12-7. In the middle of the paint, Pringle loses the basketball. Ingram comes up with it. He'll run the break. To R.J. Davis in the front court. Pump fake for three. Gets it deep down to Baycott. Pivots around Pringle and draws the foul. Boy, Baycott, it was where he caught it. He was inside the charge circle when he caught the pass. Made a couple moves against Pringle and will earn some free throws when we return. So Carolina on an 8-0 run. Alabama's turned it over four times in the last three and a half minutes, including three consecutive possessions. Tariel's lead at 12-7, 15-49 to go. First half in L.A. from Learfield. Let's face it, there's a lot of trash talk in basketball. But legendary teams let their performance do the talking. Like the Ford Bronco SUV. Rugged and powerful, so you can conquer just about any terrain. Connectivity that allows you to stay in touch. Designed to make your adventures worth talking about for years to come. Ford Bronco and Bronco Sport. That's what legends are made of. See your Carolina Ford dealer today. Some model streams and features may not be available or may be subject to change. This is the Tar Heel Sports Network from Learfield. A day where great food, friends, and family always come together. And bringing people together is what Harris Teeter is all about. We make sure you have the best and most delicious game day foods. 
Whether you're heading to the arena or making your own tailgate at home, Harris Teeter is where Tar Heel fans shop for groceries. And you can save big on your game day celebration just by joining EVIC. Sign up today and save hundreds of dollars per month. Harris Teeter, let's game day together. At Reed's Jewelers, we know that the rules of engagement were made to be broken. So don't settle for the first ring you see in the case. When you put a ring on it, make the moment your own with something that's just as unique as your love. Whether you're going big, keeping it subtle, or finding a happy medium, we're here to help you say I do with a one-of-a-kind design. Because doing things your way is what makes them mean everything. Reed's Jewelers, an official partner of Tar Heel Sports. Visit your local Reed's Jewelers in-store or online at reeds.com to chat with an expert. Tar Heels on an 8-0 run, and they lead it 12-7 with 15.49 to play in the first half. This broadcast of the NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Championship is authorized under broadcast rights granted by the NCAA through Westwood One. It is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any reproduction, retransmission, or other use of this broadcast without the express written consent of the NCAA and Westwood One is strictly prohibited. Let's take a 10-second station ID break. Again, 15.49 to go. First half, heels up 12-7. Let's break 10 seconds down the lines on the Tar Heel Sports Network. Tonight's postseason coverage of the Tar Heels is proudly presented by the Triangle BMW dealers. At BMW, they only make one thing, the ultimate driving machine. Visit TriangleBMW.com to find the dealer closest to you. Z, three straight turnovers for Alabama. Tar Heels have turned those into points. An 8-0 run with Baycott going to the line. Yeah, I think what we're seeing right now, Pringle, he plays a lot, but he doesn't usually start with this group. They're usually smaller. They have more space. They're trying to make these passes. When Nelson's on the opposite block, it's a lot tighter, a lot more congested, and Carolina's done a great job with active hands, able to knock a lot of those passes away. Some subs for both teams as Baycott makes the free throw. Carolina has brought in Seth Trimble and Jalen Withers, so Cadeau and Harrison Ingram will sit down. And Sam Walters, a 6'10 freshman from the Villages, Florida, has checked in for the first time, as has Jaron Stevenson, the freshman from Pittsburgh, heavily considered Carolina out of high school as Baycott makes both free throws. Stevenson's mom played basketball at Carolina in the mid to late 1990s. Tar Heels have nine points now off four Alabama turnovers, and they lead it 14-7. to seven. Nelson at the top of the key dishes over to Estrada. Seth Trimble guarding him. Nice move by Estrada to get to the low right block, though, and he's able to score. Tough move. We've seen Estrada make a couple of nice moves offensively for buckets. That stops that 10-0 Tar Heel run. Yeah, Estrada's a really good scorer, really good player. Carolina got it in the right corner to Trimble. He was left alone, didn't take it. He'll dribble through the paint, send it in the left corner to Withers, back out to Trimble for three. You know, they're they're Nelson backed all the way up in the lane like they did on Cadeau, but Trimble's not a bad three-point shooter. He can knock down an open three, able to knock down that one. 11 of 29 coming into the game. That's about 38%. A three on the other side by Alabama. No good. Withers had a hand on the rebound. Got knocked off of it. No whistle. And Alabama chases it down. So they have the basketball again. Sears in some trouble on the sideline. Cormac Ryan knocked off on a screen. So Sears drives. Kicks into the corner to Stevenson. Air mails the three into the hands of Baycott. Carolina the other way with a 17-9 lead. R.J. Davis to a trailing Baycott at the top of the key. He's going to try and go against Nelson. Spins by him. Hook shot off the back iron. No good. Rebound brought in by Alabama's Nelson. Good shot by Baycott. A little one hand, a little spin to the left hand. Uh, hook shot. Just got to make it. Sears to Nelson on the perimeter. Nelson bounces on the right sideline to Estrada. Around a screen. Drives in. His finger roll rolls off. Got a good look, but he couldn't finish. Baycott cleans the glass. He'll get it to R.J. Davis. Angling front side left to right. Heels up eight with the basketball. 14.05 to go first half. R.J. Davis around a streak. Bounce pass to Baycott. Fumbled the ball a bit. Recovers and scores. Great job by R.J. coming off the screen. Nelson stepped up on the pick and roll. As soon as he stepped off, he dropped it off to Baycott. He bobbled it and then was able to finish on the other side of the rim. Heels up 10, 19 to 9. Sears into the paint. His shot blocked by Cormac Ryan, but a foul is called by John Gaffney, who then has to explain to everyone why he called the foul, saying that Ryan caught Sears with the under portion of his arm on the head and that'll be a foul on Ryan his first second on Carolina it will result in free throws for Sears 
and Alabama. Both teams have taken two free throws to this point. Each team has made their two free throws to this point. Yeah, Nelson actually rolled down the lane into Baycott there, taking him off the challenge at the rim. Ryan doing a great job chasing, but he apparently got him on the head as he's coming through. Sears very effective at the line, 86%. He's taken 225 free throws this year, made 193 of them, and he makes the first one there. He'll check out for Ryan, who's done a really nice job defensively. We'll see if Carolina puts Trimble on Sears now, as both free throws are good. Ingram returns with that sub, with Ryan going out. So Sears makes both free throws. It's 19-11. Ingram left alone for three, in and out from the left sideline. Rattled out on the wide open look. Alabama a little lost defensively, didn't know who they were guarding. Estrada the other way, a switch has Baycott guarding him. Hands off to Stevenson. Stevenson drives through the top of the key, picks up his dribble, sends it in the corner to Nelson. Nelson, a challenge three is good from the right sideline, and then he points at the Dario bench after he knocked it in. You know, that's one of those shots Nelson able to hit it behind the pick and roll. You got to live with that. Alabama scored five straight. They cut Carolina's 10-point lead in half. It's now 19-14. R.J. Davis, high screen from Baycott, whips it well, right wing to Withers, who threw it right to Alabama. I don't know who Withers thought he was passing to. And now Withers fouls up top against Sears just to stop Sears from getting an open layup. Hubert Davis is asking Jalen Withers what he's doing. Has a couple of brain cramp moments there for Withers. Withers struggled a little bit here. He struggled, bobbled the ball a couple times. Um, you know, hopefully he can settle in here. That one he threw right to Alabama. So now there's two guys there. He threw right in the middle of both of them, and the Alabama guy was standing right there. So I uh, just got to settle in a little bit. Alabama on a 5-0 spurt here. Gets the inbounds. Jalen Washington is checked in for Carolina, and he blocks a shot as Ingram did he... Well, Ingram saved it on the baseline. I thought he may have tried to call a timeout, but he just gathered the ball and fell out of bounds. So the block by Washington ends up being out of bounds to Alabama. Washington came in for Baycott. So it's Davis, Trimble, Ingram, Withers, and Baycott is the five on the floor. Sears, a mile-long three is good. That is the third three that Alabama has hit, and it's an 8-0 Alabama run. They're right back within two after the Tar Heels led by 10 at 19-9. It's now 19-17. R.J. Davis gets it down low on the left baseline to Jalen Washington. He's going to go hard, kick it in the corner right side to Trimble. Extra pass to Ingram. One more to R.J. Davis. His three, no good. Withers the rebound, the putback from the right side. And that's what we need from Withers. Withers has been very effective the last couple of games, getting offensive rebounds, able to grab a tough one there and finish it. Ryland Griffin quickly the other way for Alabama. Picks up the ball, thought about the three, but Withers closes in on him. Now Sears with it, drives right to the lane. His tough shot, no good. Rebound knocked out of bounds off Alabama. It will belong to the Tar Heels with 12-13 to go in the first half. It's 21-17. Carolina stopping that 8-0 Alabama run with the Withers put back. Trimble able to guard uh, Sears on the three-point line as he drove downhill to the right. He tried coming back to the left, and uh, Trimble didn't let him get it off easily. Washington has it top of the key. They're playing well off of him. He'll hand off to R.J. Davis. Davis to the right elbow. Quickly down low to Washington. Pump fake. Got his defender in the air, and a foul is called. They're going to say, though, not a shooting foul. Even though Washington had pumped and gathered to go back up, they will say the foul was on the floor. I believe it was Jaron Stevenson. It is his first. That is just the second foul on Alabama to this point. So, Tar Heels have led by as many as 10, but this game is going to have some points and bunches. Alabama answered with an 8-0 run to cut it to two. Hills currently up four, and they'll have the ball when we return. 11.56 to go, first half in L.A., 21-17 Carolina from Learfield. For any surface and every season, Continental Tire is the smart choice in tires. From ultra-high-performance tires like the Extreme Contact Sport to passenger touring tires to all-terrain light truck tires like the Terrain Contact AT, Continental has a tire that gives you confidence no matter the road conditions. Whether you're looking for summer, all-season, or winter tires, Continental Tire has something to fit your needs. Visit ContinentalTire.com to find your ideal tire. Continental Tire, a proud partner of Carolina Athletics. 
This is Jones Angel, voice of the Tar Heels. And as a parent, I know nothing is more important than the safety of our children. More than 22% of teen-involved crashes per year in North Carolina are the result of distracted driving. Help protect our teenage drivers by ensuring they practice safe driving habits and avoid distracted driving. Always encourage your teens to put down the phone while driving and lead by example. Let's have a hands-free NC. Brought to you by Trusted Choice Independent Insurance Agents of North Carolina. Learn more at trustedchoice.com slash Heels. That to-do list you have needs one more thing. Chill. It's an easy thing to do. Just crack open an ice-cold Coors Light and chill. Take the afternoon off and binge watch anything. Go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours. Who's counting anyways? Or hang out with just your dog because you've had enough human interaction this week. Whatever you do, do it with a Coors Light. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2024 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. Play-by-play coverage of Carolina basketball in Los Angeles is presented by your Triangle BMW dealers. At BMW, we only make one thing, the ultimate driving machine. Carolina 21, Alabama 17. It will be Tar Heel basketball with 11.56 to go in the first half. We're brought to you in part by Fairfield by Marriott, part of the Marriott Bonvoy portfolio of hotels and a proud partner of Carolina Athletics. And Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina, official health insurance partner of Carolina Athletics, believes an inclusive community is a healthy community here for the Tar Heels, here for all. Quick check of those Lenovo stats, a global technology leader that has called North Carolina home since 2005. Visit Lenovo.com. Lenovo, smarter technology for all. Heels are 8 of 14 from the floor, 3 of 5 from 3, 2 of 2 at the stripe. Alabama, 5 of 13 shooting, 3 of 6 from 3, 4 of 4 at the stripe. Five points, five rebounds for Grant Nelson for Alabama. Five points for Elliott Cadeau leads the Tar Heels scoring. Cadeau remains on the bench, though. It's Davis Trimble, Withers, or Ingram, Withers, and now Baycott out there as there's going to be a pretty clear foul off the ball. Just happened to be looking at R.J. Davis as he began his motion as Carolina was going to inbound, and he got all tangled up with Rylan Griffin. First foul on Griffin third on Alabama, so it'll just be another opportunity to throw it in, which Trimble does on a bounce pass right of the lane to Davis. He'll circle back out, get to the right elbow, cross the floor to Trimble. He'll try the left sideline. Three, it's good. Trimble's hit two triples for six early points. They tried to help off Trimble off the weak side all the way over to Baycott on the opposite side of the lane. Trimble wide open, knocks it down. 24-17. Carolina scored five straight after Alabama went on an AO spurt. Alabama will try and answer the triple. Can't do it, but the long rebound to the free throw line in Pringle, who's back in for the tie. Goes in the corner right to Griffin. He's the man who just missed the three a moment ago. Nelson has it now against Withers. Shot clock down to 10. He'll hand off on the sideline. Right back it goes to Nelson. Can't finish underneath, but the rebound by Pringle is up and in. Alabama's done a good job on the offensive glass to get a couple different opportunities here early in the game. Heels up 24-19. R.J. Davis front court the other way. Dribbling on the perimeter. Now attacks. Easy bounce pass to Baycott for the two-handed dunk. Great attack by R.J. Able to get downhill. As soon as uh, Pringle helped up, he dropped it down to Baycott for the dunk. Yeah, Pringle just helped too heavily. Mm -hmm. And Baycott with the easy finish. Back to where it goes to Sears. He'll pull up on the baseline. Good from about 12 feet. A little tough. Uh, Pringle throw it to Pringle. Sears went back door. Able to catch the ball. Wait for him. A little shot fake. Uh, Knock it down. Thought this would be a lot of offense, and it's proven that way. 26-21. Davis back door to Withers. Tough pass to Baycott. I don't know what he was doing as Baycott had to go back to get it. Missed the hook shot and then Alabama comes out of there with it as Sears is again fouled on the floor. Withers got the ball on the cut and then got too deep and tried to wrap a wild pass to Baycott and sent it into the middle of the lane. Baycott went to go get it and had to throw up a tough shot. Withers and Trimble are going to leave. Withers did some good things, also had some tough moments. Trimble hit a couple of big shots. Cadeau back in, as is Cormac Ryan. So Carolina has its starting five on the floor with a five-point lead at 26-21. Alabama on the inbounds. Another quick, long three. Good by Ryland Griffin. And that's the thing with uh, Alabama. They're going to shoot a lot of these threes. They're knocking them down right now. we got to make sure we get out. 26-24. Alabama four of eight from three-point range here early on. Carolina's four of six. Cadeau. Nelson playing way off of him. Jumps the ball in the paint to Baycott. Double team comes. Gets it right to Cadeau for the... Oh, he missed missed the uncontested layup on the right side. Great great job cutting to the basket. Just got to make a layup. It was unguarded. Just rolled off. 
Sears on the right baseline. Passes in the middle of the paint to Pringle. Pringle right back to Sears. Little two-man game on the right side. Sears, fall away three. No good off the back iron. Rebound slapped out to the sideline, and Alabama's Estrada can't pick it up, fumbles it out of bounds to the Tar Heels. I tell you what, Sears is a hard guard. Pringle catching the ball there, threw it back to him. He kind of did a little sidestep and shot that one. Ryan trying to challenge as well as he can without fouling. Um, able to do well there. Alabama out rebounding Carolina 11 8. Nelson has six rebounds by himself as the Tar Heels lead it on the scoreboard 26 24. Cadeau to Baycott in the half court to RJ Davis. Long three is way Good too long. Ingram saves the rebound though to Cormac Ryan, but Ryan was stepping on the sideline when he gathered in the pass from Ingram, so it is. Alabama basketball. Davis had a clean look, but that was way off the mark. And he's going to come out. He is one of four, including 0 of two on two pretty open three-pointers here early on. Trimble returns for Carolina. Yeah, RJ's first three is wide open. That one lightly contested, but should have made it. So heels up two, 26-24. Alabama with the basketball. It's Estrada in the right corner. He's going to drive baseline against Ingram. Gets up deep underneath the basket. Has to send it out to Pringle, right back to Estrada. Estrada into the paint. Had the ball knocked away for a moment, but recovered and hooked it in. So he's tied the game. Estrada has six. Alabama's offense, they score more points than any team in the country. Game tied at 26 as the Heels go in the post, right side to Baycott, back to the basket. Double team comes on the first dribble. Baycott turns it over, trying to send it out to Ingram. Alabama with a chance to take the lead. Sears lost the ball, knocked out by Trimble. And it will stay with the Crimson Tide. 8.40 to go. So the Tide has gone on an 8-0 run to cut a 10-point lead down to 2. Now a 7-0 run to tie the game at 26 with 8.40 to play in the first half. Yeah, Baycott doubling off Cadeau. Cadeau's cutting early, so they're able to pick it up early. Uh, Baycott doesn't know where to throw the ball. we got to get the guy out of the corner, so he's got an outlet. Sears going to get a clean look from three. That's bad news for the Tar Heels. Alabama's hit five threes here in the first half, and they have the lead. Yes, and they are getting some clean looks out of, out of bounds opportunities. Cadeau's going to try and answer it. Yes, from the left wing. Hey. Cadeau and Trimble have hit four three-pointers for Carolina. And if that's what you got to do to make punish them for not guarding you. Game tied again as Griffin draws the foul on Cadeau as he drives left of the lane. And he's going to have a couple free throws. An 84% shooter. The foul on Cadeau, his first. Fourth on the Tar Heels. So Carolina is five of eight from three. Cadeau and Trimble are a combined four of four. And Alabama's five of ten from three-point range. Griffin and Sears, a combined four of six. Free throw by Griffin is good. Alabama's five of five at the free throw line. Carolina's only taken two free throws to this point. They made them both. Score is now 30-29 Alabama with 8.15 to go in the first half. Sears will take his first breather for the Crimson Tide. Yeah, I think we got to do a better job guarding Alabama. They're getting some really good three-point looks. You know, they, they're obviously five for ten, but... We can't be able to give them that good of looks when they're shooting. Second free throw off the front iron. No good. Boy, a really tough pass by Trimble. I don't know, or by Cadeau to Trimble. I don't know how it got through traffic to him. And Trimble's fouled at the rim by Stevenson. That's his second. Stevenson just checked back in for Sears. And so now Trimble will go to the free throw line for his first opportunities of the NCAA tournament. That was a low, skipping, two-handed bounce pass on the break through traffic from the right of the floor to the left of the floor by Cadeau to Trimble. Yeah, Trimble just did a great job off the free throw. Alabama was kind of taking their time getting back. He ran as hard as he could, able to get it on the opposite side of the floor. Great pass by Cadeau to be able to squeeze it through. Free throw good by Trimble to tie things up. He has seven early points. Cadeau with eight and Trimble with seven to lead the scoring. Baycott will get a breather. Washington returns. Sears is right back in for Alabama. Ryland Griffin will have a seat on the bench. He's got to find a way to slow down Sears. You know, Trimble's doing a great job on him. Uh, Ryan's done a great job on him. We just can't let him get loose. But everything they run for him yeah. is for him, so it makes it really, really hard. He already has 10 of Alabama's 30 points. And he has it again on the perimeter. Drives left of the lane and finishes with the left hand. 
It's hard when he's going to his left. Everything's set up for him to get downhill to his left. Cadeau quickly the other way, all the way through the lane. Kicks it back up top to Jalen Washington. Cormac Ryan wanted the ball on the left wing. Heels didn't see him. Trimble the other way, and his shot's blocked as Trimble decided to drive it left of the lane. Sent out of bounds by the Tide. So, man, 32-31. Both teams shooting 50% or better. Both teams have hit five three-pointers. A lot of offense here in L.A. And the Crimson Tide with the early one-point lead. 32-31, 7.43 to play in the first half from Learfield. Thank you to the more than 57,000 people who gave to UNC last year. Your gifts are helping Carolina make discoveries, find cures, improve lives, award scholarships, win championships, serve our state, and change the world. To learn more about the power of giving to Carolina, visit giving.unc.edu. This is the Sweet 16 on the Tar Heel Sports Network from Learfield. It's bow time. Sometimes the craving for Bojangles Supremes is so strong you just gotta have them. Even when your gas tank is on empty and Bojangles is still 10 miles down the highway. Nothing beats the flavor of Bojangles Juicy Golden Supremes, especially when they're part of a perfect combo with four boldly seasoned chicken Supremes, a made-from-scratch biscuit, fixin', and some legendary iced tea. The only thing that can satisfy your hunger is that delicious southern flavor. So when the craving is supreme, put the pedal to the metal. It's bow time. Together, that's how we stay in the game, ready to play. As one great team, UNC Health is keeping you well by bringing renewed focus, approach, and dedicated services close to you. Exceptional care is what you and your family deserve. Together, let's put points on the board for life well played. Team up with UNC Health, proud partner of Carolina Athletics. Each team's made 11 field goals. Each team has had five of those 11 be threes. Alabama has made five free throws. Carolina's made four. So that's the reason the Tide has a one-point lead, 32-31, with 7.43 to play in the first half. Carolina will come out of the huddle with its starting five. Kiddo, Davis, Ryan, Ingram, and Baycott. It's a new season at Kohl's with everyday styles at great prices. You can get more of what you want for less. Find go-tos for going everywhere and perfect picks for your home. Shop Kohl's and Kohl's.com today. K-O-H-L-S.com. And Harris Teeter is assisting you with groceries this basketball season. Each week, one winner will receive free groceries for every assist. Visit HarrisTeeter.com and look for the Big Four grocery assist page to enter today. Again, the score on that North Carolina Farm Bureau scoreboard. Alabama 32, Tar Heels 31. It's brought to you by Farm Bureau Insurance. Helping you is what they do best. Z, what you got? I think the biggest thing, you know, Alabama, those four early turnovers, since then they've been able to knock down threes. So we got to get them off that three-point line, find a way to score ourselves. Cadeau gets the inbounds to Baycott, right back to Cadeau to the left elbow. Now backs up again, Alabama giving him all kinds of room. Baycott has it, hands off to R.J. Davis, pulls up at the free throw line, way too strong. R.J. Davis is not just one of five, he has missed badly on a couple of his shots. Sears, really tough, a tough runner on the other side, scoops it in. Sears, meanwhile, has 14. Alabama is up three, 34-31. Yeah, we got to find a way to keep Sears off that left hand. We opened up to him, gave him the left hand drive, able to finish with a tough finish. Ingram on the right sideline, pump fake for three, out to Cadeau. They'll leave him open again. This one is an air ball from three. So, Cadeau and Trimble had made four early threes. They had made a combined 19 threes all season. So you don't want to fall in love with it, although they made some big ones early. That three was a lot different, though. All in the move, a uh, little challenge. Uh, the other two, the guys staying in the middle of the lane. 34-31. Carolina down three. Alabama feels like they have just made everything they've tossed up here as of late. They've made their last four shots a lot by Sears, who has it again. To Pringle, he hands off to Estrada, who drives to the free throw line. His jump shot is well short, but there's Pringle. For the offensive rebound, out to Estrada, no good. And this time the Tar Heels chase down the board. Coming up the left side of the floor, it's R.J. Davis. Davis, head down and turns it over. Tried to whip it to Baycott and threw it right into the hands of Sears. Tar Heels fourth turnover. Here comes Alabama the other way. 
Sears has Baycott guarding him on a switch. Huber Davis says, get up. So Baycott going to close in on Sears, who's backed all the way to the center jump circle. He's going to go one-on-one with Baycott. Hesitation. Step back. Kicks it over to Stevenson, who has it picked out of his hands by Ingram. Pitch ahead to Davis on the right side. Gets to the cup. Can't finish, though. Rebound to Stevenson. R.J. Davis, one of six, including two missed layups in transition. Estrada the other way. Push shot in the paint. Up the back iron and in. Then Pringle and Cadeau get tangled up, so they'll stop the action momentarily. Estrada now with eight. It's a 6-0 Alabama run, and the Tar Heels facing their largest deficit of the game at 36-31. You're seeing how good this Alabama offense is. Sears and Estrada able to run everything. Right now, Carolina's not helping a lot on those pick and rolls. They're just getting downhill and scoring. As Carolina adjusts, they'll try to drop those passes off. Uh, and we'll see if that makes a difference. 22 of the 36 points for Alabama between Sears and Estrada. Paxson Wojcik has come in to replace Cadeau. R.J. Davis dribbling out in the middle of the floor. Tries to get a screen from Baycott. Not much contact, so he sends it over to Ryan. A long, quick, deep catch and shoot three is good from the right wing. And Ryan's very capable. Really wasn't that even great of a play. R.J. just threw it to him. Ryan saw that Sears wasn't up guarding him and knocked down the three. Both teams, that's 11 threes between the two teams so far. Tar Heels down two, 36-34. Sears dribbling on the perimeter. He'll switch a couple screens. He hands off to Griffin. Ingram trying to guard him. He'll pull up for a three. That's good. His third three of the first half. He's the one you can't let get hot. You know Estrada and Sears are going to score. Once he gets hot, it makes it really, really hard. He'll dump it in the post to Baycott. Big sides advantage down there against Diabate. Nelson comes over from behind to block Baycott. It will be a jump ball and possession arrow to Carolina. 4.55 to go. So Griffin with 10, Sears with 14, Estrada with 8. Those three players have all but seven of Alabama's points. And Nelson there make, making a great play as soon as Baycott turned his back, coming down to try to block him. Paxson Wojcik has it between the circles for Carolina. To Cormac Ryan, another catch and shoot. Three, another make from the right sideline. And you're seeing the effect of Wojcik in, who can shoot the three. You know, without Cadeau, Nelson has to get out and guard one of our shooters. 39-37, Alabama up two. High screen. Oh, that, that's going to be a moving screen. Yeah, Nelson stuck out his leg to wipe out Ryan. And the foul on Nelson will turn it over to Carolina. And Coach Davis can get an assist on that. They were asking for him. You can't stick out your hip or your butt, whatever you want to call it, on the, on the screens. And every one of the Pringle and Nelson have been doing it. Uh, they finally got the call on it. Muhammad Wagi is coming in for the first time for Alabama, replacing Nelson. So Wagi, a junior at 6'10", and Diabate, a 6'7", freshman, playing in the post right now for Alabama. Ingram has it. Pump fake for three. Open lane for the left-handed layup and a tie ball game at 39. Great job by Ingram. Just a little slow shot fake. Got the guy to fly up and then drove down the lane. Finished the left hand. Sears in the middle of the paint. Bounces to Wagi. Picks up his dribble and it's a turnover. Loose ball to Carolina. Ingram on the run to R.J. Davis. Angle drive on the left. Can't finish. Baycott can with the two-handed flush. Here comes Alabama though. Blink of an eye the other way. They will alley-oop it and miss the open layup. Rebound, though, to Wagi Gets it to Griffin for the layup. Gracious. Back and forth they go. Yeah, Alabama had two guys not even run down the floor, so they're able to get out and transition and try to steal one. Tied at 41 as the heels get it deep to Baycott. Oh, pivots right by his defender. Wagi in the torture chamber for two. Little one dribble to the middle, spin back, little shot fake. Uh, just step through and finish. 43-41 in a high-scoring affair in Vegas. Griffin will try another three. It's good. His fourth of the half. That's a hard three. One dribble off, floating to the right. Great challenge and just missed it. His, or just knocked it down. His career high is 21. He has 15 already. He and Sears have combined for 29 of Alabama's 44 points. 44-43. Bama by one. Carolina with the ball. Ingram between the circles. Holding it above his head, whips it left side to R.J. Davis, who's been cold here early on, very cold. One of seven. He's going to go one-on-one. -on -one. Stops, pops, still can't buy a bucket. Baycott with the rebound, and he's fouled as he pulled it down. And Baycott is absolutely gassed. He bends over at the waist to catch his breath. The foul is on Wagi, his first, sixth on Alabama. So it will just be an inbound for Carolina when action resumes. Alabama shooting 53% from 
Griffin and Sears are a combined 10 of 14 from the floor, 6 of 8 from 3 for a combined 29 points. And they have paced Alabama to this one-point lead. Again, 44-43, 2.56 to go in the half. Carolina will be inbounding after this from Learfield. North Carolina's 26 electric cooperatives are partnering with outstanding educators to bring creative learning to life through the Bright Ideas Grant Program. These grants have positively impacted millions of students in all 100 counties in the Tar Heel State. Grant applications will open April 1st. Teachers, if you have a bright idea for energizing learning in your classroom, apply now by contacting your local electric cooperative or visiting ncbrightideas.com. North Carolina Electric Cooperatives, powering a brighter future. This is Carolina Basketball from Learfield. Some people like A and others like B. At BMW, we prefer X. Like the dynamic X3, meant for ultimate exploration. The X5, built to conquer even the most difficult paths. Or the pinnacle of comfort and luxury, the X7. And since every X-Range vehicle is packed with performance and versatility, you'll always get the best of X. The BMW X-Range. Your next X-Venture starts here. Take advantage of exceptional offers on the BMW X3 and X5. Visit TriangleBMWDealers.com today. You are the co-pilot. You go by many names, and Marathon knows how important you are to your team. You are the carpool driver, the assistant coach, keeper of the shoulder pads, the knee pads, and the helmets. The back of your car looks like a sporting goods store. You are the top dog at the tailgate. The ride there, the ride home, and in between, you are the biggest fan. This season and every season, Marathon is proud to fuel you and your team because we're driven together. Alabama 44, Carolina 43, 256 to go in the first half. For more than 25 years, Top of the Hill Restaurant and Brewery has been a pre- and post-game tradition in Chapel Hill. Handcrafted beer, great food and atmosphere. It's where Tar Heels come to celebrate. Well, we told you Mark Sears, terrific player for Alabama. He's played well so far, 14 points. Ryland Griffin, though, has been the 1B to Sears is 1A, and Griffin has already made four threes in this half. He's five of seven from the field, four of five from three. He's already made four threes this half than he had made the two previous tournament games. Those two pacing Alabama, and for Carolina, balanced scoring, nine for Ryan, eight for Cadeau, eight for Baycott, eight for Trimble. R.J. Davis is just one of eight from the floor. Heels down one with the basketball. 250 and counting in at the first half. Ingram, a tough step back. Three, it's good from the right wing. He saw that he had Nelson, who's one of the bigs, guarding him. He's able to hit a shot. 46-44. Estrada the other way, guarded by Wojcik. Tried the alley-oop to Pringle, and he got blocked on the rim. Here comes Ingram. Tough pass to Baycott, and finishes with the left hand. It hung on the rim and dropped home. Great job by Ingram, pushing it up the floor, coming down the right side of the lane. Able to drop it to Baycott on the left side and able to finish the left hand. Baycott has 12. He is giving Carolina all he's got in this one. Heels up 48-44. Estrada loses his dribble in the paint, chases it down, gets it to Sears. 2-10 to play first half. Sears out in the center jump circle now, guarded by Ryan. Behind the back dribble, lost it, gets it back. Ryan claps at him. Seven seconds left on the shot clock. Sears drives right, gets to the rim, hangs in the air, can't finish. Ingram rips down the rebound. Here comes Carolina the other way. R.J. Davis on the left sideline for the heels, looking for Baycott, who's been dominant in the post. Bounces it to him on the left baseline. One-on-one. -on -one. Now the double team comes. Bounces out to Davis left wing. Quickly to Ryan. Oh, my gosh, a long three. Are you kidding me? That one's from Anaheim, baby. Awesome shot by Ryan. I mean, he's two, three feet behind the line. Just catches it, squares him up, knocks it down. Timeout Alabama as the Tar Heels have taken a seven-point lead, 51-44 with a minute 41 to go. Carolina is 9 of 14 from three-point range. Ryan has made four. Cadeau has made two. Trimble's made two. Ingram has made one. If I told you Carolina was 9 of 14 from three and R.J. Davis didn't have one, would you believe me? Gracious, 51-44. Tario's up seven. And see, we said, I mean, look, you're happy the heels are up seven. There's a lot more points to come in this oh, game. Yeah. You can just tell by the way this is going. Yep. And I, I don't.
don't even necessarily feel like Carolina's played poor defensively. Mm -hmm. Alabama is a terrific offensive team. They are. You know, between Sears and Estrada, they're going to get to their left hand. They're going to make plays. They're going to make shots. And then on top of that, we talked during the timeout, Griffin is knocking down three after three after three tonight. So they get in that third guy in there, uh, and it's really hard to guard them. But we are challenging a lot. We're making mostly difficult shots recently for them. Uh, on the other end, you got to give a lot of props to Coach Davis, seeing that how they're guarding Cadeau and Trimble. He put in Wojcik, who isn't usually a major minute guy, but could be tonight because it allows the space on the floor to open up so much. Baycott's able to dominate in the post because they can't double as quickly. Uh, it'll be interesting if they throw it to Wojcik, if he can knock him down now. You know, Cormac Ryan had those 31 points in Cameron. His career high before that came against Alabama in the NCAA tournament when he was playing for Notre Dame in the round of 64 in 2022. He had 29 points that day on 10 of 13 shooting, including 7 of 9 from 3. He is 4 of 4 from the floor, all from 3 in this game so far. So Ryan has enjoyed a lot of success against Alabama through a game and a half in the NCAA tournament, but a long way still to go here in Los Angeles. It is 51-44 Carolina. Tariel's on an 8-0 run. Ryan with 12. Baycott has 10 points and 5 rebounds. R.J. Davis is just 1 of 8, but does have 5 assists for the Tariels. Ingram has 4 assists, 3 rebounds, and 9 points. Also, 8 points for Cadeau and Trimble. 2 points for Davis and Withers. For Alabama, it's been mostly 2 guys. Griffin with 15. Sears has 14. Estrada has added 8. So those 3 players have 37 of Alabama's 44 points. The other points coming from Nelson, who has five, and Pringle, who has a pair. Minute 41 to go. It will be Alabama basketball. Tariels with the 51-44 lead here in L.A. The winner will see Clemson. The Tigers advance to the round of eight for the first time since 1980 with a 77-72 win over Arizona earlier tonight. A minute 41 here. We just need to close out the first half here solid to try to keep the seven-point lead. Yeah, see if Carolina can close this half strong. Sears has it out near the timeline. He's picked up his dribble, so Ryan closes in on him. Sears in some trouble. Ryan calling for the five-second violation, which he does not get. Sears up getting it back to Estrada in the corner. Almost lost it out of bounds. Drives left baseline and hits the runner. Estrada drive baseline there. He's really good. He just kind of stops in the middle of nowhere on the dime. Able to, he didn't even jump. Shot a little left hand, a jump shot from about three feet. Estrada's tough. His fourth different school as Ryan trying to drive on the right side is cut off. He'll back up into the corner. Flip a pass down low to Baycott. Baycott goes hard. Double team comes. Baycott gets away from it. Misses the hook shot. Ingram, the offensive rebound. Out to R.J. Davis. Doesn't take the three. Drives in. Bounces to Ingram. One more to Ryan. Another three is up. That one's too strong. Wojcik with the offensive board. To Ryan. Extra pass to Ingram. Pump fake for three. Nelson flies by. That one's good. Nelson looked like a 747 soaring by. <laughs> he just flew by. Great job by Wojcik to get the rebound. Threw it to Ryan. Ingram shot fake as Nelson was trying to recover. Knocked it down. 54-46. Griffin blocked by R.J. Davis. He saved it to Baycott. Baycott couldn't handle it, though. Back to Griffin. Griffin sends it to Estrada. Unguarded left corner three. No good. Baycott tips the rebound to Wojcik. He'll circle back out and slow it down. We all need Lucky. to. Gracious. Yeah. 20 seconds on the clock. Hubert Davis will not use the timeout. He is calling the play to the Tar Heels. Lucky there. Estrada wide open in the corner. Just missed it. Uh, Wojcik, great job running down the rebound. Carolina up by eight. R.J. Davis dribbling in the middle of the floor. Crossover to get to the right. Runs into Sears, and that'll be a foul. R.J. Davis is hurt. He is down holding his he's something. All right. He's all right. I'm not sure what he's holding. It's his elbow. He is taking, you know, he's taken a couple of hard falls on that left elbow this year, and I think that's what was bothering him. The foul on Sears is his first. That's the seventh on Alabama. So a one and one for Davis. See if he can knock one in here just to see something go in. Wojcik checks out to a nice round of applause. Those were a couple good minutes for Wojcik. Second straight game, he's given Carolina some quality minutes off the bench late in the half. Yeah, 3.9 to go. Z. Here's a one and one for R.J. Davis with the heels up 54-46. And he missed it. Rebound to Alabama. They'll, boy, an early half-court heave is no good. I think Estrada had another couple dribbles. And Davis head down. Cormac Ryan goes to get him and puts his arm around him to say something to him. As R.J. Davis, an unusually poor half, one of eight from the field, missed his only free throw attempt 
And yet with that, the Heels still lead by eight, 54-46, thanks to Ingram, Ryan, and Baycott. Those three combining for 34 of Carolina's 54 points. The Heels hit 10 three-pointers in the half and lead it by eight at the break from Learfield. Did you know that your unused medications could end up in the wrong hands? It's important to keep your medications secure in a locked location, such as a locking box or locking cabinet. When it's time to dispose of them, safety and properly dispose of old, expired, or unused meds by using an at-home disposal product or a medication disposal box in your community. Don't miss out on medication take-back events happening near you. Don't let anyone take what's yours. Lock your meds. Be aware. Don't share. Learn more at lockyourmeds.org nc. They're not just the Tar Heels, they're your Tar Heels. Customize your Wells Fargo debit card or open an account today to show your Carolina pride with every purchase. Get started at wellsfargo.com backslash Tar Heels. Wells Fargo is proud to be the official bank of Carolina athletics. Copyright 2023, Wells Fargo Bank, N.A., member FDIC. This is the Tar Heel Sports Network from Learfield. Hello, Tar Heels. This is Jeff Denny. I played on championship teams for Coach Dean Smith, and now I've partnered with former teammate Pete Chilcutt to build another winning team at Generator Supercenter, serving you in the Triangle, Triad, and Central North Carolina with the number one residential partner for Generac in North America. We offer sales, installation, and service with a Generac whole home backup generator, so your power will never go out. Go to GeneratorSupercenterOfTheTriangle.com for the game plan. That's GeneratorSupercenterOfTheTriangle.com. Do you hear that? That is the sound of BMW performance without a single piston or cylinder. A generation of all-electric vehicles designed and built like no other. The BMW iX, i7, and i4 revolutionize every drive into a thrilling opportunity to feel the pure rush of BMW 100% electric. But isn't that what you'd expect from the ultimate electric driving machine? Visit TriangleBMWDealers.com today for exceptional offers on the BMW Electrified Fleet. Carolina and Alabama going shot for shot in Los Angeles. And at the half, the Tar Heels lead the Tide 54-46. This is the Wells Fargo halftime show complete with stats, highlights, and, of course, scores on the North Carolina Farm Bureau scoreboard. Helping you is what they do best. Two finals already to report from the NCAA tournament. Clemson first into the Elite Eight. And the first time Clemson has been in the Elite Eight since their only other appearance all the way back in 1980. The sixth seed, Clemson, knocks out the two seed, Arizona, in the West Bracket. Final score, 77-72. The Tigers into Saturday's matchup against either Carolina or Alabama. The other final, not nearly as close. UConn, 82. San Diego State, 52. The Huskies return to the Elite Eight as, again, the defending champs in this event, UConn, will get either Illinois or Iowa State in uh, Saturday's game. That Illini-Cyclones matchup got started just after 10 o'clock, and as those two teams head down the stretch of the first half, still 7-19 to play, Illinois 21, Iowa State 12. So that's all the action today in the NCAA tournament. Things continue tomorrow at 7.09 with NC State battling Marquette out of the South region. The winner of that game gets the winner of Houston Duke, which starts at 9.39. So those are the two games in the South region tomorrow. Gonzaga Purdue, the early game at 7.39 out of the Midwest bracket. That's the lower right hand side on the uh, your uh, bracket as you might be keeping track wherever you are tonight. Creighton, Tennessee also a uh, 9 tip tomorrow. So uh, winner Purdue Gonzaga gets the winner of Creighton, Tennessee on Sunday and the winner of that Houston Duke game gets the winner of NC State Marquette on Sunday and before you know it we'll be down to a Final Four. Two already into the Elite Eight. Carolina and Alabama at the half. The Tar Heels up on the tide, 54-46. Pat Kelsey, by the way, hired at Louisville. 
Charleston's uh, former head coach went 75 and 27 in three years with the Cougars. Kelsey takes over for Kenny Payne, who went just 12 and 52 in two years at Louisville. So we'll get back to uh, business here on the Wells Fargo halftime show with a quick reminder. Carolina leads Alabama at the break 54 46. The Tar Heels rain down 10 three pointers in the uh, first half and lead by eight. Ten of 16, by the way, is what Carolina shot from beyond the arc. That's the most since the Heels made 11 threes at Florida State back on February 27th, 2023. So we knew it was going to be high scoring. We've not been disappointed. Carolina leads Alabama by eight, 54-46. Ultimate halftime highlights when we come back to the Wells Fargo Halftime Show from Learfield. What does Carolina basketball have in common with the Honda Accord? More trophies than Duke. The award-winning 2023 Honda Accord. Named to Car and Driver's 10 best list a record 37 times. Part of Honda's impressive full lineup. Accord, Civic, CRV, HRV, Pilot, Passport, Odyssey, and Ridgeline. With available Honda Sensing, Apple CarPlay, and more. Because winning fans deserve a winning car. Find one now at your Honda dealers of the Carolinas. Once you get Jersey Mike's catering with 12 subs for any event, I'll tell you, there's no going back to other catering. That would be like going back to using Mars code. Welcome to Jersey Mike's. Okay, here we go. A pickle slice wrapped in a napkin. Oh, wait. Try this. A brownie with extra olive oil? Whoops. I mixed up my dots and dashes. Here. 1,800 catering boxes coming right up. Uh Uh-oh. Nope. There's no going back once you get catering at Jersey Mike's. A sub above. This is the Sweet 16 on the Tar Heel Sports Network from Learfield. Hey, Tar Heel fans, this is Hubert Davis, head men's basketball coach at the University of North Carolina. Carolina fans are the best in the nation, and I'm so thankful for your support. Just like our team relies on solid fundamentals, you need the right foundation for your feet. And that's where the Good Feet Store comes in. Their team of trained arch support specialists will find a personalized solution for you to help relieve foot, back, knee, and even hip pain. Support your heels today and head to the Good Feet Store in Chapel Hill, Raleigh, Greensboro, and a new location in Wilmington. It's game day, a day where great food, friends, and family always come together. And bringing people together is what Harris Teeter is all about. We make sure you have the best and most delicious game day foods. Whether you're heading to the arena or making your own tailgate at home, Harris Teeter is where Tar Heel fans shop for groceries. And you can save big on your game day celebration just by joining EVIC. Sign up today and save hundreds of dollars per month. Harris Teeter, let's game day together. The ultimate first half highlights are brought to you by your local Carolina BMW dealers, providing legendary performance, exceptional offers, and a premium ownership experience. At BMW, we only make one thing, the ultimate driving machine. Carolina 54, Alabama 46. That's our score at the half. This is the Wells Fargo halftime show. Again, with Carolina knocking down 10 three-pointers. It was a big first half, but not the biggest scoring half of the season for Carolina. Let us not forget, against another SEC team in the ACC-SEC challenge, the Tar Heels put up 61 and a half against uh, Tennessee. So 54, it's a bunch, but not the most the Tar Heels have had in a half this year. All right, let's get you those ultimate halftime highlights as Carolina came out firing from distance. And uh, despite the fact that Alabama decided to stag, uh, sag off Elliott Cadeau early, that did not prevent the freshman from knocking this shot down to tie the game at seven. Ingram in the post left side, just outside the lane, trying to back in against Estrada. Loops a pass to Cadeau, left alone for three. Got it, made it. So seven all after the Cadeau three-pointer. Later on, the Tar Heels would go up three with Cormac Ryan getting into the act. Davis gets a screen from Baycott. High hedge by Alabama. Baycott has it. Down low to Cadeau. Out to Cormac Ryan for three. So Carolina and Cormac Ryan up 3-10-7 after that triple. Carolina leads 54-46 at the half. We'll skip ahead and we'll go inside to Armando Baycott, who made it a seven-point game. R.J. Davis front court the other way. 
Dribbling on the perimeter, now attacks. Easy bounce pass to Baycott for the two-handed dunk. So Armando Baycott into double figures in tonight's game with 12 points to lead the way for Carolina as the Tar Heels lead 54-46 over Alabama. Let's step back out beyond the arc and go back to Elliott Cadeau. Cadeau's going to try and answer it. Yes, from the left wing. Hey. Cadeau and Trimble have hit four three-pointers for Carolina. So Elliot Cadeau, who knew that the young freshman would have two three-pointers in tonight's game and have eight points in playing nine minutes and helping lead Carolina to an eight-point advantage, 54-46. Back to action later on in the first half. Cormac Ryan with the Tar Heels down 36-31 would put the Heels within two. R.J. Davis dribbling out in the middle of the floor. Tries to get a screen from Baycott. Not much contact, so he sends it over to Ryan. A long, quick, deep catch and shoot three is good from the right wing. So Cormac Ryan, he caught fire, knocked down four threes in the first half. He and uh, Baycott both have 12 to lead the Tar Heels. And uh, what do you say we stick with the inside-outside game? Back inside to Baycott with the follow. A loose ball to Carolina. Ingram on the run to R.J. Davis. Angle drive on the left. Can't finish. Baycott can with the two-handed flush. That broke a 39-39 deadlock. It put the Tar Heels up 41-39, and the Tar Heels continue to hold the lead at the half up 54-46. Cormac Ryan, he doesn't need an introduction from beyond the arc. Let's listen to this. R.J. Davis on the left sideline for the Heels, looking for Baycott, who's been dominant in the post. Bounces it to him on the left baseline. One-on-one. -on -one. Now the double team comes. Bounces out to Davis left wing. Quickly to Ryan. Oh, my gosh, a long three. Are you kidding me? That one's from Anaheim, baby. That put the Tar Heels over the 50-point mark. It was 51-44 after that, and there was no finer way to finish the first half than with another three-point basket. Ingram, the offensive rebound. Out to R.J. Davis. Doesn't take the three. Drives in. Bounces to Ingram. One more to Ryan. Another three is up. That one's too strong. Wojcik with the offensive board. To Ryan. Extra pass to Ingram. Pump fake for three. Nelson flies by. That one's good. Nelson looked like a 747 <laughs> soaring by. So Carolina with the eight-point lead at the break, 54-46, leading Alabama in the Sweet 16. Clemson awaits the winner in Saturday's regional final in L.A. We'll run through first-half stats when we come back. Heels lead the Tide by eight, 54-46 from Learfield. Tar Heel fans, customize your car wash experience today with the new Zips Car Wash mobile app. Download the app today and start earning points with every in-app purchase. And get access to app-exclusive offers that save you money. Zips Unlimited members can even earn points for monthly membership purchases. Plus, when you download the app today, your first car wash is on us. Available for iOS and Android. Zips has 33 locations across North Carolina to serve you. Zips Car Wash, proud partner of Carolina Athletics. Hunt Brothers Pizza, the official pizza of Carolina Athletics, joins Tar Heels fans across the nation cheering Go Heels. Whether you're at home watching the game or out on the road, download our Hunt Brothers Pizza app to find a location near you. The Hunt family has been proudly serving our delicious original crust pizza to North Carolina families for over 20 years. With all toppings, no extra charge, and 10 to choose from, there's sure to be a topping combination for everyone to enjoy a Hunt Brothers Pizza. This is Carolina Basketball from Learfield. They're not just the Tar Heels, they're your Tar Heels. Customize your Wells Fargo debit card or open an account today to show your Carolina pride with every purchase. Get started at wellsfargo.com backslash Tar Heels. Wells Fargo is proud to be the official bank of Carolina Athletics. Copyright 2023. Wells Fargo Bank N.A. Member FDIC. At Reed's Jewelers, we know that the rules of engagement were made to be broken. So don't settle for the first ring you see in the case. When you put a ring on it, make the moment your own with something that's just as unique as your love. Whether you're going big, keeping it subtle, or finding a happy medium, we're here to help you say I do with a one-of-a-kind design. Because doing things your way is what makes them mean everything. Reed's Jewelers, an official partner of Tar Heel Sports. Visit your local Reed's Jewelers in-store or online at reeds.com to chat with an expert. The Wells Fargo Halftime Show continues with Carolina 
leading Alabama 54-46. The Heels shoot 20 of 38. That's 52.6%. 10 of 16 from three-point land. That's 62.5%. And 4 of 5 at the line. Rebounding, deadlocked at 19. The Heels, 14 assists on those 20 made baskets and only turned it over four times en route to the 54-46 advantage against the Tide. Carolina outscoring Alabama in bench points, 10-zip. Points in the paint, 16-16 on the break. It's 4-4. Get the sense there's not a lot that separates these two teams through 20 minutes of play, although the Tar Heels do have the eight-point halftime advantage. Cormac Ryan and Armando Baycott leading the way for the Heels with 12 points. Harrison Ingram, your third player in double figures. He's got 10. Seth Trimble, Elliot Cadeau both have eight. R.J. Davis, just one of eight shooting, has two points. Jalen Withers has two. Paxson Wojcik and uh, Jalen Washington both saw action in the first first half but neither scored for Alabama the tide goes 17 of 35 from the floor that's a little better than 48 and a half percent seven of 14 from beyond the arc and five of six at the free throw line Rylan Griffin leading all scores with 15 points he connected on four of five from three point range Mark Sears the team's top scorer has 14 on five of eight shooting the only other tied player in double figures is Estrada he's got 10 and it took him 11 shots to get there going five of 11 from the floor and oh of three from beyond the three-point arc. Our score at the half reads Carolina 54, Alabama 46. And as we near the top of the hour, let's pause 10 seconds for a station ID down the lines on the Tar Heel Sports Network. It's a 54-46 advantage for Carolina at the break, leading Alabama. The winner gets Clemson on Saturday for a spot in the Final Four. UConn awaits the winner of Illinois-Iowa State in the East region as the Illini lead the Cyclones 30-17 with just about three and a half minutes left to play. So it's uh, been an exciting night, and we'll see how much more excitement there is over the final 20 minutes from L.A. as Carolina holds a 54-46 advantage on Alabama. That'll do it for the Wells Fargo Halftime Show brought to you by Wells Fargo, official sponsor of Carolina Athletics. We'll send things back out west. Jones and Z will have the game's second half play-by-play action. When we come back, it's Carolina leading Alabama 54-46 from Learfield. They're not just the Tar Heels, they're your Tar Heels. Customize your Wells Fargo debit card or open an account today to show your Carolina pride with every purchase. Get started at wellsfargo.com backslash Tar Heels. Wells Fargo is proud to be the official bank of Carolina Athletics. Copyright 2023, Wells Fargo Bank, N.A., member FDIC. Dunkin' is dropping a new kind of energy. Introducing Sparked Energy by Dunkin'. It's energy for the fun of it. Available in two full-on delicious flavors, Berry Burst and Peach Sunshine. It's what you need when your afternoon needs you to get going. A revitalizing burst of caffeine, vitamins, and minerals gives you the energy to turn the fun up to 11. True story. Drop by or order ahead on the Dunkin' app today. Fruit flavored contains 0% fruit juice. Caffeine from caffeine and guarana. Participation may vary. Limited time offer. Terms apply. This is the Sweet 16 on the Tar Heel Sports Network from Learfield. Together, that's how we stay in the game, ready to play. As one great team, UNC Health is keeping you well by bringing renewed focus, approach, and dedicated services close to you. Exceptional care is what you and your family deserve. Together, let's put points on the board for life well played. Team up with UNC Health, proud partner of Carolina Athletics. There are two legendary teams in our state, the Tar Heels men's basketball team and ours at Quality Equipment, where you'll find an unmatched lineup of John Deere equipment from tractor packages to riding mowers and zero turns. Get yours with an unbeatable cash prize or with great financing at our lowest ever monthly payment. Backed by our professional parts and service team that always comes through in a clutch. Stop by one of our 36 locations or visit us online at qualityequip.com. I 
That'll do it for the Wells Fargo Halftime Show. Brought to you by Wells Fargo, official sponsor of Carolina Athletics. Tar Heels leading 54-46 at the break. Heading to the second half. We'll head to the Trusted Choice of the Game. Brought to you by the Trusted Choice Independent Insurance Agents of North Carolina. Who wants you to stay safe behind the wheel? Put down your phone while driving and let's have a hands-free NC. To learn more and find an agent near you, visit trustedchoice.com slash go heels. Z, what do you think will be important in the I second think, half? I think we got to figure our defense out. You know, I think Sears and Estrada are getting downhill a little too easy going to their left. And then Griffin and Sears both shooting threes at a very, very high rate. Uh, so we got to make sure we try to get them off. Overall, we challenge well, uh, but we can't have many can't let them have any easy ones, especially early in the first or second half here. And obviously Carolina shot the ball extraordinarily well from three, 10 of 16. Got to make sure you don't fall in love with it. I mean, you still take them, obviously, oh, but yeah. make sure they're good ones if you have them. So, Carolina leads by eight. It will be Alabama basketball first. The Crimson Tide won the opening tip. There was one jump ball in the first half. So, we'll belong to Alabama. Carolina will come out with the starting five of Cadeau, Davis, Ryan, Ingram, and Paycock. The yeah. winner gets Clemson, who Z topped Arizona earlier tonight, 77-72. Yeah, you have to assume Nelson's going to guard Cadeau and stand in the middle of the lane. So it'll be interesting what Carolina does to attack it now. It will be Estrada with the basketball first to Nelson on the left sideline inside the arc to Sears. Catch and shoot, long three is too strong. Cadeau slaps the rebound out, but it goes to Alabama. Ends up in Griffin's hands. He misses the three. Another offensive rebound, though, for Alabama. This time it is Pringle to a cutting Sears for the layup. Third chance on the possession for the tide. Ends up in two. Hubert Davis claps his hands in frustration that Carolina couldn't complete the defensive effort with a rebound. A good back screen by Pringle there for Sears to get open for the back screen. And now an offensive foul on the other end called on Baycott for an illegal screen. It is his first and a quick turnover for the Tar Heels. There were only 12 fouls called in the first half. Seven on Alabama, five on Carolina. So an early one on the heels. So Alabama scores on its first possession, gets the offensive foul, and has it right back. It's 54-48. Tar Heels by six. Pringle on the drive, leaves it for Nelson. He jumps up, and a foul's called on Ingram. As Steven Anderson out near the sideline called the foul, the official, Michael Reed, who was right there, didn't call it. So Pringle threw it to Nelson. Uh, Ingram went to rebound, didn't know he was there, and as he caught the ball, hit him. Estrada on the left baseline, tried the little pocket pass too low. Kicked away by Pringle into Carolina's hands. Heels the other way. R.J. Davis, Carolina going right to left as we see it in the second half. Cadeau's going to drive on Nelson, gets him to the paint, has to send it back out to Ingram, now to Cadeau. Nelson giving him plenty of space. Cadeau goes to the free throw line, drives hard, kicks it to Ryan. Left side three is a little too strong. Ryan gets his own rebound, tried to kick it to Baycott. It's free. Tar Heels get it back. They work it around the perimeter. Cadeau, cross court, right corner, Ryan. Extra pass to R.J. Davis. Long triple is off the front iron. No. Baycott between two Crimson Tide players gets the offensive board to Davis. Now Cadeau. He'll drive into the paint. Draws contact. No whistle. Baycott's hat could have grabbed the rebound. Tried to slap it out. It goes to Alabama. Sears the other way. Bumps into Ryan. To a trailing Pringle. His layup won't go. Baycott gets the rebound. Woo! Here we go the other way. 18-18 to go. 54-48. Carolina will set up in the half court. Both teams playing hard, a little chaotic. Uh, just a lot of aggression and a lot of chaos. Between the circles, Cadeau. Slowing it down now to R.J. Davis. Gets it in the post to Baycott. Double team comes. Kicks it out to Ingram. Pump fake for three. Drives to the left elbow. Now he's going to back out. No look pass goes left corner to Cadeau. Cadeau drives into the paint. Jump stop. Tried to get it to a cutting R.J. Davis and turned it over. Tripped on the step through. He drove right. Tried to step through to the left. Kind of tripped on it. Uh, desperation throw. Nobody was there and um, out of bounds. Already second turnover for Carolina as Baycott got tie his shoe. Oh, he's tying his shoe. I thought he was checking out. He's just going to tie his shoe on the scores table. There is a sub for Alabama as Sam Walters has come in for Pringle. So Tariels have already turned it over twice this half after just four in the first half. They only turned it over 14 total times in the two games in Charlotte. 54-48. Sears around a screen. Quick three is short. And it's going to be a foul on Nelson for shoving Baycott in the back on the rebound. That's two on Nelson. 
He becomes the second Alabama player with two fouls. Stevenson also has two. For Carolina, Withers and Ingram each have two. Nobody has three for either side. A great job there by Baycott blocking out. Able to Sears came off. Nelson was rolling to the rim and just ran right into his back. Armando keeps working out his right shoulder as Cadeau to Davis on the top left, right back to Cadeau. Feet set, three-pointer, bounces around. No, Baycott earns another foul on the rebound, tangled up with the tide. Cormac Ryan will come in to shove Baycott out of there. Foul is on Diabate, who also had checked in in that last dead ball, his first. Second on Alabama, Baycott continues to work hard in the post. Yeah, and Cadeau's still guarded by Nelson, which is their biggest guy on the floor, not letting him guard Baycott. He'll get it down to Baycott. Double team comes, keeps possession, goes up against it, and draws another foul. And Tar Heels have still, and now the officials come in again as there have, Carolina still had scored this half. Alabama has just two points. It's 54-48, but now Baycott is going to go to the stripe. The foul was called on Nelson, and that's his third. So Baycott took one dribble middle. Nelson tried to come back as they know Baycott likes to go back to that right hand. Able to hit him on the arm. But really what's happening is Nelson, the largest guy on the floor, or tallest guy on the floor, is guarding Cadeau on the three-point line as Baycott knocks down the first one. Cadeau, and when he catches the ball, Nelson has coming out to guard him because he's realized he can make that wide open three, which leaves Baycott at the rim with a small guy on him. So he just has to continue to work in there, get those rebounds. When he catches in the post, make a quick move. Okay, say so they've just changed the foul to Diabate. So now Diabate has two, which I'm not sure that's the right call because it looked like Nelson hit him on the arm, but... Nelson will go back to two. Nelson had checked out when they thought he had three fouls, so they let Alabama bring Nelson back in, even though no time had gone off the clock after he checked out. Nate Oates is trying to control the game, including the officials right now. <laughs> I think because he hadn't sat down, they let him back in somehow. Free throw, no good by Baycott. Cadeau with the rebound. Out to Ryan. Doesn't take the three. Kicks it over to R.J. Davis. Can't drive. He'll try to step back triple. It is too strong. And a foul called on Baycott. I thought Nelson just lost his balance there. And Nate Oates was complaining for a long time about Baycott during that free throw sequence. So that's two now on Armando. R.J. Davis continues to struggle. He is one of ten from the floor. Really hard shot there, though. Drove in, got just below the or just above the free throw line, then tried to step back to a three. Really hard shot. He can make it, but not, not tonight. 55-48, Carolina by seven. Alabama with the basketball. Diabate to Nelson, straight on, guarded by Baycott. Both those players now have two fouls. Tarles get mixed up off the ball. That is a wide open back door to Walters for the easy layup. Great cut by Walters coming off with Sears. Both, both men jumped to Sears and left Walters open. 55-50, Alabama within a five. Carolina has, oh my gosh, Sears just ran over Cadeau, who was, trying to, that. who was trying to set the screen, and the foul's going to be called on Sears. That's his second. Oh, wow. That was a Sears. hard collision. Yeah, I mean, he looked like a football lineman running over Cadeau there. Cadeau stopped, tried to set a screen. He just ran straight through his chest. So that's now two on Sears. Carolina still doesn't have a field goal this half. Just one Baycott free throw. Alabama's outscored the Heels 4-1 in this half. R.J. Davis frustrated with his offensive struggles over to Ingram. Hard drive. His fall away. Tough shot from the free throw line is no good. Carolina's still without a field goal this half. 0 of 5. Make it 0 of 6 from the floor. Diabate drives against Cadeau. Can't finish. Cadeau gets the loose ball rebound. Tar Heels the other way, and Cadeau is run over from behind by Diabate. And Cadeau doing a great job there, coming up with speed, seeing Diabate frustrated, able to run in front of him, and then he just ran him over. That's already five fouls on Alabama this half. There were 12 fouls called in the first half. There have been eight already in this half. That's three on Diabate. Sears, Nelson, Stevenson all have two. For Carolina, Withers, Ingram, and Baycott all have two. You got to remember when it gets chippy, the refs are going to tighten up a little bit, and they've done a great job with that, controlling the game. Uh, we got to be smart. Cadeau's going to take another three off the back iron. The problem with him making the first two, he's going to get comfortable. He's got to realize, get back downhill. Carolina still without a field goal this half, leads it by five. 
Jaron Stevenson, big sides advantage in the post against R.J. Davis, but Estrada going to drive and a tough finish. Really tough. Driving left, did a great job making him go back to his right. Really hard finish on right. the spin move. Alabama within three. Ingram left of the lane. Alabama's outscored Carolina 6-1 this half. He'll still don't have a field goal. And they've played more than four minutes. R.J. Davis, another tough shot. That's a step back three, no good. Rebound knocked into the baseline area by Alabama. It will belong to Carolina as Walters tried to save it, but stepped out of bounds. So Carolina is 0 of 8 from the field this half. Six of their eight shots have been three-pointers, and they have not made any of them to this point after going 10 of 16 in the first half. 55-52, Tar Heels holding on to a three-point lead after leading by eight at the half. 15.30 to go, second half in L.A. from Learfield. Let's face it, there's a lot of trash talking basketball. But legendary teams let their performance do the talking. Like the Ford Bronco SUV. Rugged and powerful, so you can conquer just about any terrain. Connectivity that allows you to stay in touch. Designed to make your adventures worth talking about for years to come. Ford Bronco and Bronco Sport. That's what legends are made of. See your Carolina Ford dealer today. Some model streams and features may not be available or may be subject to change. This is the Tar Heel Sports Network from Learfield. At Reed's Jewelers, we know that the rules of engagement were made to be broken. So don't settle for the first ring you see in the case. When you put a ring on it, make the moment your own with something that's just as unique as your love. Whether you're going big, keeping it subtle, or finding a happy medium, we're here to help you say I do with a one-of-a-kind design. Because doing things your way is what makes them mean everything. Reed's Jewelers, an official partner of Tar Heel Sports. Visit your local Reed's Jewelers in-store or online at reeds.com to chat with an expert. Hunt Brothers Pizza, the official pizza of Carolina Athletics, joins Tar Heels fans across the nation cheering Go Heels. Whether you're at home watching the game or out on the road, download our Hunt Brothers Pizza app to find a location near you. The Hunt family has been proudly serving our delicious original crust pizza to North Carolina families for over 20 years. With all toppings, no extra charge, and 10 to choose from, there's sure to be a topping combination for everyone to enjoy a Hunt Brothers Pizza. Tariels led by eight at halftime, but have been outscored 6-1 this half. They still do not have a field goal as the Heels are up 55-52 and will have the ball, but looking to find some offense with 15-30 to play in the second half in L.A. Tonight's postseason coverage on the, of the Tar Heels is proudly presented by Triangle BMW dealers. At BMW, they only make one thing, the ultimate driving machine. Visit trianglebmw.com to find the dealer closest to you. And Modelo's, proud to sponsor Carolina basketball. Modelo's an official beer of the Tar Heels. Jones Angel, Tyler Zeller, courtside in L.A. We're joined here by Adam Lucas, helping us out with stat work. Ben Alexander, our chief network engineer. Dave Nathan, John Essek in the Tar Heels Sports Network studio. Heels do make one sub as Cadeau goes out and Trimble comes in. So Z, Heels up three, but still no field goals this half. Yeah, we got to get better quality shots. We shot six threes of our eight shots and just haven't been good. Inbounds goes to Baycott, right back to R.J. Davis, who had been the inbounder. He bounces in the post to Baycott. Spins baseline against Nelson, goes up and under, misses, gets it back, can't score, gets it again, and this time he can. Great job by Baycott taking it right to Nelson with two fouls. He does not want a foul. I actually thought he got fouled, but still, great job, strong move. Estrada on the right wing, drives deep, kicks it out to Nelson. Pump fake our three. Baycott's got to be careful, and Nelson is able to go up and under for the two-pointer. Tough move. Little shot fake, drove right, able to finish on the left side of the rim. 57-54, Carolina by three after both teams get a bucket. Baycott on the right baseline, back to the basket. The freshman Stevenson garden. Baycott out to Ingram. Feet set, three-pointer on the way, no good. Baycott with the foul. rebound, foul. and he's going to be called for the foul. He is hopping mad with the call. Almost spiked that basketball. That's the third foul on Baycott all this half. 
and Carolina will go to the bench and get Jalen Washington. So some big minutes upcoming for Washington as Baycott has been called for three fouls in the first five minutes and 15 seconds of the half. And Alabama's doing a good job. Nelson was guarding him. Nelson's big enough to be able to push and shove on him. And then they're switching off Stevenson and some other small guys. And they're getting Baycott with these kind of ticky-tack fouls because he used to hit Nelson and all of a sudden it's somebody a lot smaller. 57-54. So Baycott with 15 points and 11 rebounds has to sit down. Sears on the left sideline, guarded tightly by Ryan. Drives in, sends it out to Nelson. Pump fake against Washington. Drives in, his floater is short. Rebound, fought for. Nelson gets it back, and he's fouled by Washington. Make Nelson shoot that three. I know he's very capable, but he will shot fake. Jalen Washington jumped at it. He's long enough to be able to challenge without jumping, and then he got downhill and uh, just never really recovered. That's now 10 fouls called this half after there were 12 called in the first half. Each team's been called for five. And that's going to be free throws for Nelson, an 81% shooter who went two of two in the first half. If he makes them both, Alabama will be within one. And the first one is good. And Tar Heels are now being outscored 9-3 to three this half by Alabama with another free throw on the way. Heels just one of 13 from the field this half as both free throws are good. Heels 1 of 13, 0 of 7 from 3 this half. Their lead is down to 1, 57-56. Got to find a way to score if they got out. Davis short bounce pass to Washington, top right to Ingram. Now to Cormac Ryan. Jump stop to the free throw line. Whips it in the right corner to Trimble. Hard drive into the paint. Goes all the way through. Now he's on the left side of the lane. Still dribbling. He's going to try a tough turnaround. I think it was blocked by Stevenson. Good defense by Stevenson. Drove all the way across the lane, came back. Really bad shot. Uh, got blocked. Estrada, big Euro step. Kicks it left corner, open three. Good for Alabama. Sam Walters. And Alabama has its first lead since it was 44-43. They've outscored Carolina 13-3 this half. 59-57. Great play by Estrada to find the open shooter. Withers has come to the scores table. So Baycott on the bench with three fouls. And the Tar Heels ice cold offensively. Trimble drives baseline. Has to send it out to Ingram. Shot clock down to 10. Jump stop for Ingram. Out to Ryan. Fakes the catch and shoot three. Pulls up for the long two. No good. Heels one of 15 from the floor. Rebound it to the Crimson Tide. They send it over to Sears. Sears. Jump stop in the paint. Out to Stevenson. His three. Rattles out Ingram with the rebound. He'll get it to R.J. Davis. Carolina down two. Doing a good job on Sears. Got to get up on the other guys. Davis to a trailing Ingram. Right back to R.J. Davis. 13.02 to go. Heels led by eight at halftime, but they are one of 15 from the floor. Davis can't get by Estrada. He'll back up on the drive. Still dribbling. Over to Ingram on the left wing. Jab step. Spin. Forces one up, and it goes. Great move. Little one dribble, two dribble to the left. Able to spin move. A little scoop shot on the other side of the room. Ties things up at 59. Just the second field goal Carolina's made this half. Nelson. A switch has Trimble guarding him. He's at about the left elbow. Tries to drive in. His pocket picked by Ryan. Both teams dive to the floor. It will be a jump ball in possession to Carolina. With 12.31 to go. Ryan is slow to get up. He is still on his chest. Does a push up. Now he's kind of on his hands and knees. And... He is going to limp his way. Well, I thought he was going to go to the bench. He's going to retie his right shoe. I think he's just trying to buy a little time. The shoe is very tied, so um, <laughs> yeah. trying to buy a couple minutes. Hopefully just got the wind knocked out of him, but he was limping there, so probably not. He's had uh, some issues sure. with that right ankle this year. Man. Carolina has Davis Trimble, Ryan staying in. Withers came in for Washington. Yeah, Ingram and Withers on the floor. And Ryan's Al still tying that shoe. And Alabama's got Pringle back in, so they got some size and athleticism on the floor. Withers is going to be able to have to is going to have to be able to match that. Baycott still on the bench with three fouls all this half. Picked him up in the first about five minutes of the half. Carolina and Alabama tied at 59. Ingram. Backs up to the left corner against the freshman Walters. Crosses the court to Trimble. Hands off to Ryan to the right elbow. Backs up against the freshman Stevenson. Between the legs. Crossover. Ryan backs in. Pivots. Still holding it. His fall away. No good. The rebound tipped around. Both teams fight for it. It belongs to Alabama. Tar Heels 2 of 16. Make it 2 of 17 from the floor. Sears spinning into the paint. Lost the ball. 
And a foul called on Withers as he is closed in on Sears picking up the loose ball. And he picks up his third. That's six fouls on Carolina this half after they were called for five in the entire first half. And Nate Oates taking the opportunity yet again to talk to the officials, which he has done a bunch here in the second half. 11.55 to go. Carolina shooting 12% from the floor this half. Two of 17. And that's allowed Alabama back in it. Tied up at 59. 11.55 to play from Learfield. It's game day. A day where great food, friends, and family always come together. And bringing people together is what Harris Teeter is all about. We make sure you have the best and most delicious game day foods. Whether you're heading to the arena or making your own tailgate at home, Harris Teeter is where Tar Heel fans shop for groceries. And you can save big on your game day celebration just by joining EVIC. Sign up today and save hundreds of dollars per month. Harris Teeter, let's game day together. And we're back with the action. Coke Zero Sugar might be the best Coke ever? That's right, Jim. With an irresistible taste and zero sugar, Coke Zero Sugar is a must-try for any sports fan. So make sure you... Wait, Jim, I didn't mean try it right now. We're still on the air. Mmm, <coughs> best Coke ever? Take a taste, Jen. Really? No, not right now, Jen. We got a game to call. Some people like A and others like B. At BMW, we prefer X. Like the dynamic X3, meant for ultimate exploration. The X5, built to conquer even the most difficult paths, or the pinnacle of comfort and luxury, the X7. And since every X-Range vehicle is packed with performance and versatility, you'll always get the best of X. The BMW X-Range. Your next X-Venture starts here. Take advantage of exceptional offers on the BMW X3 and X5. Visit TriangleBMWDealers.com today. Play-by-play -play coverage of Carolina basketball in Los Angeles is presented by your Triangle BMW dealers. At BMW, we only make one thing, the ultimate driving machine. After a first half, the Carolina shot 53%, 10 of 16 from three. The Heels are 2 of 17 from the floor this half. 0 of 7 from 3. That has allowed Alabama to come back from an 8-point halftime deficit to tie things up at 59. They've outscored the Heels 13 to 5 this half. This is a wild game. They're 28 combined offensive rebounds, and yet the Heels have 8 offensive rebounds this half, just 2 second chance points this half. It has been an up-and-down frantic game. We're brought to you in part by the Good Feet Store. Foot, knee, hip, or back pain. Good Feet Arch supports are engineered to support all four arches to provide pain relief, balance, and comfort. Try them for yourself. Book your free fitting today at goodfeet.com. And basketball camps are back. Young men who will be in 6th or 7th grade during the 24-25 school year can apply for a scholarship through their local electric cooperative to attend the UNC Basketball School this June. Apply online as Alabama about to inbound in at ncelectriccooperatives.com slash sportscamps. Inbounds goes to Stevenson. North Carolina's electric cooperative building a brighter future for people and communities across the Tar Heel State. Estrada, tough too. Good from straight on. Wojcik, who checked in, was right in his face, but Estrada able to swish it home from about 18 feet. Yeah, and Alabama, you got to remember, they're a very, very good offensive team, able to knock down a lot of these tough, difficult shots. Carolina has Davis, Wojcik, Ryan, Ingram, and Withers on the floor. Baycott still on the bench with three fouls. Ryan going to try a right sideline three with his legs split out and comes up short. Tariel's 0 of 8 from three this half. Alabama with a two-point lead and the ball. Sears a quick long three. Too long, but an offensive rebound missed by Alabama. Stevenson gets it back, and he's fouled. But Carolina just can't keep Alabama off the offensive glass without Baycott in the game. And really, even with Baycott in the game, they've struggled at times. As Stevenson going to go to the free throw line where he is a 70.5% shooter, 31 of 44 on the season. He'll have two shots to try and extend Alabama's two-point lead. Yeah, and with RJ struggling to score this lineup, we got to find a way to get some points because, you know, Wojcik's not a high-velocity score. Uh, Withers, Ingram can do it at times. Ryan can do it at times. So we got to find a way to score. Free throw, no good. Well, that was a one. Got lucky there. That was the seventh foul on Carolina, so it was a one and one, not a shooting foul for Stevenson. So Carolina will have the ball after the defensive rebound, down 61 at 59. 
R.J. Davis, just one of 11 from the floor. To Ingram, right back to Davis. He's going to drive down the center of the cup and get the layup with the left hand. Great job. He hit ahead, hit right back to him, and just got downhill. Good to see him get some points. Estrada, deep drive. The kick in the corner, no good on the three. Rebound, R.J. Davis gets it. He'll come out of the fight with it. Down the court, Davis weaving through traffic. Forces it off the window, no. The tip in won't go once, twice. Ingram gets it back. He'll kick it to Davis. Feet set, how about a three? No, Wojcik flies in, tips the rebound out of bounds, but off of Alabama, it will belong to Carolina with 10.24 to go. R.J. Davis now 2 of 13 from the field. And Carolina competing as hard as they can here. Not able to make a lot of these shots, but really, really just getting after it. The officials now discussing they might overturn this call. Logic. And they will change the call. John Gaffney came in and said it was off of Wojcik. So it will belong to Alabama instead. 10.24 to go. Carolina, one of its last seven and three of 23 in the half. We just need RJ to be able to make a couple. Thankfully, he's able to get a layup on a couple possessions ago. Hopefully, he can continue to build on that. Yeah, two of 14 now. 0 of 7 from three. Estrada gets Baycott on him on a switch. Passes to Diabate, who checked in. To Sears. Back to Estrada. They want to attack Baycott with the three fouls. Estrada, tough runner, rolls off. And a good job by Ryan as he had a box out on Diabate and earns the foul. That's four on Diabate. As fouls are going to become a story. Yes. That's seven on Carolina, six on Alabama this half. Yeah, Estrada there trying to go one-on-one -on -one with Baycott. Really shot a tough, difficult floater. Baycott did a great job. And then Ryan just doing a great job on the weak side blocking out. Baycott's got to be careful because Diabate's guarding him. A smaller guy, they're going to double off Wojcik. Uh, when he catches the ball in the post. Ten minutes gone by. Some of the worst offensive minutes of the season for Carolina. See if they can recover. Double team comes to Baycott. To Wojcik on the left wing. Thought about the three. Instead goes with the pass to R.J. Davis. Davis a crossover against Griffin. And he's fouled out in the middle of the floor by Griffin. That's going to be two on Griffin. And now seven on Alabama. So both teams are in the one and one. R.J. Davis to the line where he went 0 of 1 in the half. He has been, or in the first half, he is 5 of 7 in the NCAA tournament, 19 of 25 in the postseason if you count the ACC tournament. And you can tell he's frustrated. He's sitting there trying to talk to himself. And I'm not a shooter, but I know when you're missing shots, it makes it very difficult. Uh, you just got to find a way to get through it. Davis to the line in a tie game at 61. Heels have just seven points in the first 10 minutes and 15 seconds after scoring 54 in the first half. Free throws good. It's good for RJ to get a couple free throws, maybe get a little feel for it. Uh, hopefully be able to knock these down. Baycott being back in, that Alabama's going to start doubling him again. Uh, we just got to find a way to be able to capitalize when they double. Davis, Wojcik, Ryan, Ingram, Baycott, the five on the floor. And this is the lineup that was really, really good uh, together in the first half. Davis makes them both. 63-61. Wojcik's going to have to be able to knock down that three when they try to double off of him with Nelson. Right now it's Alabama with the basketball. Sears. He'll switch a bunch, so now Baycott guarding him. Well out on the perimeter. Another screen. Sears going to go hard on the left. Gets deep, and I think he stepped out of bounds. He did. In fact, they... Did they call a foul, or did he just step out of bounds? Stepped just out. stepped out of bounds. I didn't know if maybe John Gaffney had said that Sears had hooked as he drove down the baseline. Not the case. Just a turnover. Carolina will have the ball. Sears thought he was going to get fouled and just kept going, ran right out of bounds. R.J. Davis slowly walks it front side to Wojcik. The deep on the left wing. He's going to fire up the three. Good! Wojcik over top of Nelson for the triple. Looking at Baycott coming across on the screen. Woj uh, Nelson backed up, just knocked down the shot. Heels by five, and a foul called on R.J. Davis on the other side on the driving Rylan Griffin. So the officials, boy, the whistles, the dramatic difference in the two halves just in the amount of fouls. Twelve called in the first half, already 15 this half. And we still have 9.03 to go. Griffin to the line. Two shots. The officials had originally said one and one, but will now say he was in the act of shooting. So Griffin, two shots. He was one of two in the first half. Nearly 84% coming into the game. And Griffin there just tacking downhill, went right to RJ's chest. Tough call. 
Free throw too strong off the inner back portion of the iron and out. Wojcik knocking that three down is huge because Nelson's going to realize he can't help quite as much off of him. The other adjustment they made, instead of um, having other people throw it in, they were trying to have Wojcik throw it into Baycott. It's an awkward angle to double, double team off of. Griffin goes one of two at the strike. Let's see if they go back to the same play here. 66-62. Carolina by four with the ball. R.J. Davis dribble. Still out between the circles, guarded by Griffin. Gets a screen from Baycott. Davis on the right wing. Now he's going to attack, get to the rim, and lay it home. A little hesitation crossover, able to beat him to his right hand, able to get an easy layup. 68-62, heels by six. They led by eight at halftime. Ball goes in the right corner for Alabama to Walters. Passes to Diabate. Gets deep, throws it way off the glass. No, but Diabate, he and Baycott fighting for the rebound. Tip it in. It'll be credited to Diabate. Quick second jump, able to get back up and tip it back in. 68-64. to 64. R.J. Davis, pocket pass to Baycott, running to the rim and hammering it home. Baycott, R.J. came off, Baycott came off, wide open on the weak side. Griffin, a transition three is good on the other side, and Alabama takes a timeout. Got to get matched up in transition. We lost Griffin, one of the best shooters right now in this game. Uh, we got to be able to get out to him. Griffin up to 19. That timeout called by Alabama will be a full. The three-pointer cuts Carolina's lead from 6-3, to 70-67. 8-10 to play here in Los Angeles. It will be Carolina ball and a three-point lead when we return from Learfield. What does Carolina basketball have in common with the Honda Accord? More trophies than Duke. The award-winning 2023 Honda Accord. Named to car and driver's 10 best list a record 37 times. Part of Honda's impressive full lineup. Accord, Civic, CRV, HRV, Pilot, Passport, Odyssey, and Ridgeline. With available Honda Sensing, Apple CarPlay, and more. Because winning fans deserve a winning car. Find one now at your Honda dealers of the Carolinas. This is the Sweet 16 on the Tar Heel Sports Network from Learfield. Hey, Tar Heel fans, this is Hubert Davis, head men's basketball coach at the University of North Carolina. Carolina fans are the best in the nation, and I'm so thankful for your support. Just like our team relies on solid fundamentals, you need the right foundation for your feet. And that's where the Good Feet Store comes in. Their team of trained arch support specialists will find a personalized solution for you to help relieve foot, back, knee, and even hip pain. Support your heels today and head to the Good Feet Store in Chapel Hill, Raleigh, Greensboro, and a new location in Wilmington. There are two legendary teams in our state, the Tar Heels men's basketball team and ours at Quality Equipment, where you'll find an unmatched lineup of John Deere equipment from tractor packages to riding mowers and zero turns. Get yours with an unbeatable cash prize or with great financing at our lowest ever monthly payment. Backed by our professional parts and service team that always comes through in a clutch. Stop by one of our 36 locations or visit us online at qualityequip.com. Just a furiously paced game in Los Angeles with Carolina leading by three, 70-67. 8-10 to play. Carolina will have the basketball. Food Lion, proud to sponsor the score to give more program for each free throw the Tar Heels make in today's game. Food Lion Feeds will donate 100 meals to a local area food bank. And on that Farm Bureau scoreboard again, it's 70-67. Carolina, 8-10 to play. It's brought to you by Farm Bureau Insurance, helping you is what they do best. Baycott, 17 points, 11 rebounds. Ingram, 12. Ryan has 12. R.J. Davis is 3 of 15 from the floor. 8 points, 19 for Griffin to pace Alabama. Just two off his career high of 21. Sears has 16, Estrada 14. Z is Carolina's ball with a three-point lead. Yeah, I think, first of all, we got to get back in transition. You can't give him that three, three to Griffin on that pos- uh, possession. Get up by six and give a quick... Uh, three back to him. So, uh, but really, this lineup has been effective. You know, having Wojcik out here keeps the paint a lot more open. RJ is able to get downhill. Uh, so, hopefully, we can continue to stick with this and uh, be effective with it. Davis, Wojcik, Ryan, Ingram, Baycott, five on the floor. Davis comes up front court on the left side, dribbling in front of us, looking for Baycott. Gets it to him just outside the post on the left. Going to spin baseline against Pringle. Stops deep underneath, still pivoting, mu- muscles it up. It won't go in. Bodies fall to the floor, and Alabama comes out with the rebound. Good move by Baycott. Just got to finish it at the end. 
Ryan Griffin around a screen, a guarded three. This one's no good. Rebound to R.J. Davis on a hop. Davis coming the other way. Cross-court pass to Woj. He's thought about the transition three. He'll kick it to Davis. He'll try the trailing triple point. Off the right side of the rim, not even close. Davis has been off the mark all night. Griffin the other way, dribbles into the right corner. Baycott guarding him on a switch. He's going to drive into the paint. Stops, pivots. Baycott stays in front of him. Griffin muscles it up, doesn't get the bounce. And an over-the-back foul on the rebound on Alabama's Pringle. His second as he went over the back of Ryan. That's the eighth on Alabama. And so Ryan will have a one-and-one one after another full timeout. Now with 7-17 to play. Still 70-67. Carolina by three. Ryan to the line for a one-and-one. R.J. One. Davis visibly distraught as he goes to the bench holding his hair in frustration. Cormac Ryan stops him, slaps him on the chest, and says something to him as they sit down on the bench. Davis, 3 of 16, 0 of 8 from 3. Heels lead by 3, 7-17 to play from their field. That to-do list you have needs one more thing. Chill. It's an easy thing to do. Just crack open an ice cold Coors Light and chill. Take the afternoon off and binge watch anything. Go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours. Who's counting anyways? Or hang out with just your dog, because you've had enough human interaction this week. Whatever you do, do it with a Coors Light. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2024 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. Every day in the U.S., more than nine people are killed and 1,000 injured in crashes involving a distracted driver. You can't control other motorists, but you can control how you operate your vehicle. Avoid distractions while driving, like texting or checking social media. You can't drive safely unless driving has your full attention. Any non-driving activity you engage in increases your risk of crashing. Brought to you by Trusted Choice Independent Insurance Agents of North Carolina. Learn more at trustedchoice.com slash goheels. Playing basketball at the highest level requires excellent physical conditioning. And keeping your home in shape requires regular physical attention, too. As a proud partner of Carolina Athletics, Allen Tate Realtors recommends a home physical. We'll help determine your home's value, share the latest market data and trends, and recommend updates and improvements to maximize your most important investment. Whether you plan to sell or stay, take a tip from Allen Tate and defend your home court with a home physical today. Visit homephysical.com to get started. Play-by-play -play coverage of Carolina basketball in Los Angeles is presented by your Triangle BMW dealers. At BMW, we only make one thing, the ultimate driving machine. Carolina leads 70-67, 7-17 to play. Cormac Ryan will be at the free throw line for a one and one when action resumes. Our broadcast presented in part by Allen Tate Realtors. Whether you're buying, selling, relocating, or seeking financing or insurance, Allen Tate can help. Allen Tate Realtors, the number one realtor in the Carolinas with more than 70 local offices and is a proud partner of Carolina Athletics. Some Lenovo stats brought to you by Lenovo, Lenovo.com, Lenovo Smarter Technology for All. Both teams shot around 50% in the first half. Alabama was just under 49%, 17 of 35. Carolina was just under 53%, 20 of 38. This half, Alabama shooting 36.5%. Carolina shooting 21.5%. 70-67. One and one for Ryan, who is at the line. Free throw is up, and it's good. We need these free throws. Struggling to score a little bit right now. Sometimes one-on-one -on -one free throws. If you knock them both down, it can be a lifesaver. Second one on the way for Ryan, who had 12 points in the first half. That was his first point here in the second. And you're kind of getting the feeling RJ's struggling to score here, so we've got to find a way to score other ways. Um, RJ continue to be aggressive, try to get to the rim. Both shots good by Ryan, 72-67. Estrada brings it front side, flips it on the left elbow, back to the basket to Nelson, who now faces up. Drives right of the lane against Baycott, tries to go up and under and scores. Nelson's been good tonight for Alabama with 11. And he likes that step through to the opposite side with the right hand, uh, drove to the right side of the lane, and then stepped all the way through to the left side to be able to finish. 72-69 as Ryan has it on the right sideline, passes to the right baseline to Ingram. One-on-one -on -one with Estrada. He's going to try and back in. Spins to the baseline, had it stripped, gets it back, still with his dribble, fires up past the Baycott, he missed the dunk! Baycott had an uncontested dunk that he missed, 
Alabama the other way. Nelson is fouled by Wojcik, and he'll have two free throws. A good foul by Wojcik. Nelson was wide open running to the basket. Baycott a little frustrated. we got to get RJ and Baycott on the same page here. Just just get them going here. We're, we're good, though. We're still up three. Um, everything's going to be fine. We just got to try to – hopefully Nelson misses these. We'll see. Um, Baycott, I mean, not even – he was standing in the yeah. right corner by himself. Both Ryan and then Ingram both went to go try to talk to him. He was – so frustrated, didn't even join the huddle until late. As now Nelson is going to the line for two shots after the first foul on Wojcik. And the free throw good. Nelson has been perfect at the line, 5 of 5. He has been big for Alabama, 12 points and 11 rebounds. His third double-double this year. He's one of four Alabama players in double figures. Yeah, and he can make it a one-point game, Z, which he does not rebound to Wojcik. He protects it at the free throw line. It's 72-70. They got obviously frustrated, but it happens. you got to move on. Baycott trailing the play, gets it between the circles. To Ryan on the left wing, outside the lane, left side to Ingram. Pass out to Ryan, a long three is hey. good. Great shot, Sears chased him over, and as soon as he put his hand down, Ryan knocked, it over, knocked, the, knocked the shot down. 75-70, Estrada the other way. To Pringle, right back to Estrada. Curls around it, into the paint. Looked like he traveled, no whistle. The shot rolls in for Estrada. Estrada's tough on that. He got a little handoff going to the left hand, able to kind of float it up over Baycott. 75-72, Carolina by three. 5.53 to play. Davis, middle of the floor to Ryan on the right wing. Low bounce pass goes to Baycott in the post against Pringle. Double team comes. Baycott stopped on the drive, gets it to Ryan, able to tiptoe, stay in bounds on the sideline. Now to Davis out near the timeline. Shot clock under 10. Davis around a high screen, drives through traffic, kicks a corner to Wojcik. Extra pass to Ingram, pump fake. Now he'll take the triple off the iron. No rebound to Alabama. Long pitch ahead goes to Griffin. He'll find a trailing Estrada for a three to tie the game. we got to get back in transition. They did a great job pitching ahead to Griffin. We did a great job closing out on him, but we didn't get Estrada as he came down the court. Alabama's made five of its last seven shots. They've tied things up at 75. 5-10 to go. Davis on the right sideline. And a foul, foul is Pringle. called on Pringle. Pringle hedged out on the ball screen there, attacked RJ. He fouled him last possession. They didn't call it. This one, he got his arm in there and called the foul. That's the ninth on Alabama, so it's a one and one. And Pringle's going off limping here. That's Pringle's third foul. So this is a one and one for RJ Davis, who is two of three at the stripe tonight. Alabama's made five of its last seven shots to tie things up at 75 with 5.08 to go. So one and one for Davis. Game tied at 75. Baycott has to realize when they're doubling, they're not trying to double as hard with Nelson with Wojcik in. Free throw by Davis. Good. There we go. Good to see RJ making at least free throws he's making them. Um, but we got to try to get him to be effective on the rest of the game. Continue to create for others. He's created for Baycott a few times. Hey, we'll get a couple dunks for him. Uh, we just got to find a way to kind of grind this game out here. He does have six assists. Talking about Davis. Three of 16 from the floor. Nine points. Another free throw for R.J. Davis with 5.08 to play. Good as well. It's good to good he's making a couple of those. Hopefully he can get a little rhythm. Both teams have been called for nine fouls, so every foul double the rest bonus. of the way, double bonus for both sides. Nelson. Wojcik guarding him on a switch. He's going to try him back in on the left, and Wojcik called for the foul. And Wojcik's not a great post defender. Uh, Nelson able to just attack him there. Uh, but Wojcik's been effective. He's been a good good uh, substitution for him. So now two shots for Nelson, who is five of six at the line, three of four this half. I feel like we've been at the free throw line a lot. Yeah, this half, Alabama four of seven, Carolina seven of eight. So this two shots for Nelson with 4.56 to play. Heels up 77-75, first free throw good. And the second half here has been a lot uglier offensively for both teams. So uh, I think whoever can figure it out, they be able to steal a couple baskets, is going to be the team that can pull out the win here. Nelson to try and tie it on the second free throw, which he does. He's been good at the free throw line. It remains Davis, Wojcik, Ryan, Ingram, and Baycott. Five on the floor. Davis dribbling out for Carolina. Game tied at 77, 4.45 to go. RJ still dribbling on the perimeter. Goes behind his back. He's going to try a step back three from the left wing. Spins out. Not a good shot. Nope. He never passed it. Three no. of 17 from the floor. 0 of 9 from three. 
And that's one of those possessions you wish you could get back because there's just nothing that happened to create a good shot. Nelson going to try and drive against Ingram. Gets deep and gives Alabama the lead. Nelson has been huge this half. He has 11. Tariel's down two with 4.17 to play. And Nelson basically just going one-on-one -on -one with Ingram, realizing yep. he's bigger and able to get to the rim. Carolina just 7 of 32 from the floor this half. Ryan has it. Flips it into Baycott. One-on-one -on -one with Nelson. Double team comes. Baycott lost the ball. A turnover. Alabama with the ball in the lead. 3.58 to go. Heels need a stop. Alabama's made its last four shots. Everything just sloppy for Carolina right now. they got to clean it up. Nelson on the perimeter guarded by Ingram. Nelson going to pull for three. Good. Nelson on fire for Alabama. He's giving him a five-point lead with just 3.38 to go. The time is now for the Heels. They'll take a timeout. we got to give Nelson a lot of credit. He's made a lot of plays here recently. we got to find a counter for him. Nelson has 19, 14 in the second half. And Alabama has matched its largest lead of the game. Nelson in alone has gone on a 7-0 run for Alabama over the last minute 21. Carolina no field goals in the last 244. 335 to play here in LA and the Tar Heels down by five. I think this is going to be a full timeout. We'll take it too. Carolina down five from Learfield. From the mountains to the coast, 2.5 million North Carolinians are members of an electric cooperative. As a co-op member, you're part of exciting efforts to power a brighter future in the Tar Heel State. From innovative energy projects that make the grid more resilient and sustainable, to initiatives that strengthen local communities and services that make managing your energy use easier, electric cooperatives are here for you. Learn more at nclectriccooperatives.com slash brighter. This is Carolina Basketball from Learfield. Facing divorce or family law matters? Count on Wake Family Law Group. Led by board-certified family law specialists, we approach your divorce or custody case with integrity and meticulous attention to detail, aiming for positive outcomes for you. Rely on us to advocate for your interests and help you move forward. Serving the triangle and surrounding counties, learn more at www.wakefamilylawgroup.com. Wake Family Law Group, your future, our priority. Hey there, Triangle NBA veteran and UNC basketball star Pete Chilcutt, proud owner of Generator Supercenter of the Triangle, is thrilled to present the real MVP, Generac Generators. Pete Chilcutt here. On the court, I know the importance of a strong defense. Off the court, Generator Supercenter of the Triangle has your back with Generac Generators. With turnkey installation and unbeatable reliability, Generac Automatic Standby Generator ensures your power will stay on, family will be safe, and most of all, you'll have peace of mind. Schedule a consultation today at GeneratorSupercenterOfTheTriangle.com. Grant Nelson has scored seven straight for Alabama to flip a two-point deficit for the tie to a five-point lead with just 3.38 to play. This is the largest lead, matching the largest lead for Alabama tonight. The Tar Heels, after such a good first half offensively, have just had a miserable second half. Seven of 32, 22%, two of 14 from three-point range in this half. R.J. Davis is just 3 of 17 from the floor, 0 of 9 from three-point range. Baycott had 12 points and five rebounds at halftime. He has just five points here in the second half. So it's time for Carolina right now, down five, 335 to play. Each team with two timeouts. Possession arrow belongs to Alabama. Each team in the double bonus. Carolina has brought in Jalen Withers for Wojcik. So it is Davis, Ryan, Ingram, Withers, and Baycott. Baycott has it straight on top of the key. He'll hand off to R.J. Davis. Davis going to attack right of the lane. Kicks it out to Withers. Withers, hard drive left of the lane. Gets the layup to go with the left hand. Great finish there. Able to shot fake. Able to get downhill, get to his chest. A bucket that we desperately needed there. 82-79, Alabama. 3.08 to go. Withers. Nelson has been a one-man wrecking crew. Drives against Withers and can't finish. Withers with the rebound for Carolina. Long outlet to Cormac Ryan. Two-on-one with Ingram, but Ryan has to circle out. Didn't like what he had. 
He'll hand off to R.J. Davis. Carolina down three with the ball. 2.50 to play. Davis to Baycott. He'll hand it right back to Davis. Crossover. Pull up in the middle of the lane for two. And that's what R.J. is so good at. He, he's not knocking down his shots. He's able to come off to his right, able to cross back over, get down in the middle of the lane and shoot a little floater in the middle of the lane. 82-81 Alabama. 2.32 to go. Sears dribbles out in the center jump circle. A switch has Ryan guarding Nelson off the ball. Withers guarding Sears on the ball. Quick pass to Stevenson, the freshman on the right side. Hands off to Estrada. Going to drive left of the lane against Baycott. Comes up short. Baycott with the rebound. Hands off to R.J. Davis. Davis coming front side. Stops on the top left to back up. Gets a big screen from Baycott, and he's fouled out on the perimeter by the freshman Stevenson, his third. Tenth on Alabama. Two shots for R.J. Davis. R.J. doing a great job there. Baycott came to set the screen. R.J. coming off hard and attacking that hedge because they're hedging so flat. Uh, Stevenson did not get out high enough, able to kind of clip his hip and be able to draw the foul. Davis a little gimpy after that collision. I think they may have hit knees. Continuing to flex out his left leg. 82-81 Alabama, 2.09 to play. Two shots for Davis on the 10th team foul by Alabama. Good to see him come out of this timeout with some life. Able to get a couple buckets here. First free throw for Davis with 2.09. Is good. Ties the game at 82. Out goes Stevenson. In comes Sam Walters, who has five points all this half. A little offense for defense, trying to get some shooters on the floor for Alabama. Um, Got to make sure we get out to him. Second one for R.J. Davis with the game tied at 82. 2.09 to go in the Sweet 16. Is good. Heels have come out of the timeout with six straight to take the lead back, 83-82. Need a big stop here, a score and a stop, and he should be in. Ryan waiting for Sears. Sears is going to pull up for a long three, no good. Rebound, Withers. He'll Great. give it to R.J. Davis, 155 to go. Great rebound by Withers. Baycott engaged with Nelson. Uh, Withers came over the top and grabbed it, so neither of them could. Davis dribbling in the center jump circle. Guarded by Griffith. Going to get a high screen from Baycott. Backs up. Davis now attacks, gets it to Baycott, and a lot of contact, no whistle. Withers tips the rebound, ends up out of bounds to Carolina with 135 to go, seven on the shot clock. Great hustle by Withers, trying to keep it alive there. Uh, smart play by RJ as it started coming out of bounds, knowing that Alabama had touched it last. I think the officials were going to check the clock. Well, John Gaffney thought he was going to check the clock. With seven on the shot clock, Baycott shot in traffic. Well, now the officials are going to talk about it as to whether or not they thought Baycott shot with contact hit the rim. Pringle back in to try to guard Baycott, trying to get some size on him. Uh, okay. That Nelson can try to double. Z officials have said the clock is right. So seven on the shot clock. Inbounds to Baycott. Right back to R.J. Davis. Going to drive right of the lane, and he's fouled. Great job by uh, Baycott coming to the ball. R.J. just came flying off of it. Able to turn the corner. Nelson didn't close that far enough. Able to draw the foul. It's on Pringle, his fourth. So now Pringle and Diabate have four. Stevenson with three for Alabama. Two shots for R.J. Davis. 83-82, Carolina, 132 to play. Love to see R.J. here. He's getting downhill more, not settling for that three as much. We've needed it. Davis gets the basketball. Again, 83-82. 1.32 to play. Davis had the free throw line. First one. Good. Good shot. 84-82. Pringle out. And Walters back in. He had actually left at some point during that sequence. When the dead ball, when RJ was throwing it in, he came in. But Here comes to Davis again. 84-82. 1.32 to go. Second free throw. Good as well. We've got to get another big stop here. Sears had a good look last possession. We can't afford to give him that good of a look again. 85-82. Tariel's on an 8-0 run after being down five. Sears around a high screen. Going to drive left of the lane and force it in. Only gave up two. Not terrible. Wish he could have got a stop, but at the same time, it's not a three to tie. R.J. Davis the other way for Carolina. will stop as he crosses the timeline on the right. 110 to go. Heels up one, 85-84. Withers going to give a high screen to Davis. Drives to the right. Kicks it over to Withers. He's going to try a three off the back iron. No. Terrible shot from Withers. Yeah, Withers, four of 19 on the season. Took that three. 
It was a good look. He was open, but not at this time of game. Sears drives to the left elbow. Backs up under a minute to go. About a 30-second difference. Shot clock and game clock. Sears trying to drive on Ryan. Ryan moving his feet. Sears still left of the lane. Going to dump it down to Nelson. Nelson and forces it up and in, and the foul on Withers. Great great play by uh, Sears, realizing that we double teamed. They threw it down to uh, Nelson. Nelson, a little shot fake. Withers flow into him. Foul, able to finish. 38.6 to go. Alabama up a point with Nelson back to the line. Nelson has 21-16 in this half. Yeah, I mean, Nelson's been good. He's been effective inside, able to finish at a high rate. Uh, we got to find a way to score now. 38.6 to go. Nelson has been good at the free throw line, 7 of 8. One yeah. shot here. Alabama has nobody on the line to rebound. 86-85. Nelson's free throw is good. They're up 87-85. Tar Heels, I think, are going to call a timeout. They do with 35.3 to go. Withers, 4 of 19 from three-point range on the season. Took that three in a one-point game with about a minute to go. And Alabama gets the rebound and then a three-point play on the other side from Nelson, who has killed Carolina in this half. He is one of four Alabama players with 18 or more points. Nelson, a double-double, 22-12, and 12, his third double-double of the year. 19 points for Griffin, 19 for Estrada, 18 for Sears. Carolina, 17 for Baycott and 12 rebounds. His double-double ties him with Tim Duncan for the most in ACC history as he now has 87 in his career. 17 for Cormac Ryan. 16 for R.J. Davis, but 4 of 18 from the field, 0 of 9 from 3. Ingram has 12 points, but just 2 this half. The timeout by Carolina leaves them with 1. Alabama has 2. Both teams in the double bonus. Possession arrow belongs to the Crimson Tide. 35.3 to go. 87-85 Alabama. It will be Clemson who awaits the winner on Saturday. Tigers beat Arizona 77-72 in the, the first game tonight. Carolina, I believe, brought in Paxson Wojcik for Withers during that timeout. They will come out of the huddle with Davis, Wojcik, Ryan, Ingram, and Baycott. It'll be interesting where we go because Davis obviously struggling offensively but able to get downhill the last couple of possessions. Ryan shooting the ball very well tonight. Or do we go to Baycott in the post? Heels just 9 of 36 shooting this half, 25%, 2 of 15 from 3. Inbounds goes to Davis. Carolina down 2. Davis with 31 seconds left, dribbling on the perimeter. Still on the right side. Comes back to the left. Davis, a tough jump stop, and his shot is swatted out of bounds by Nelson, who lets him hear about it. 24.3 to go, 15 on the shot clock. Good move by RJ, just trying to draw the foul, not able to draw it. Inbounds will be Ryan, baseline right. Gets it into Davis in the corner. Now to Wojcik out near the timeline. Carolina got to go, shot clock down to 10. Gets it to RJ Davis, heels down two. Davis, guarded by Griffin, around a Baycott screen. He's going to go hard on the right, lost the ball, gets it back, forces one up, no good. Rebound, fought for, out of bounds, and the shot clock went off. Davis's shot did not hit the rim. Great defense by Nelson. RJ trying to turn the corner. Nelson able to get to his chest. Davis can't get the shot off. Because it didn't touch the rim, it kept Baycott off the, the boards on the weak side. The officials are going to go to the monitor. Probably going to try to figure out how much time to leave on the clock. Well, and check and see if it hit the rim. So the review brought to you by the Honda dealers of the Carolinas. Take your Tar Heel tailgate to the next level with a new Honda. See your Honda dealer of the Carolinas today. Tar Heels do not have a field goal in the last 2.36 they have come up empty on the last two possessions. And they have changed the clock to 8.6. They said the shot clock violation is correct. So it will be Alabama ball. So Tar Heels got a foul here, which will result in two shots for Alabama. And if they make them both, then they'll be up by four points. If you try, you obviously want um, their worst free throw shooter to catch it. They just subbed out everybody who's a bad free yeah, throw shooter. Yeah, this is a great so free throw shooting team. It's going to be a tough tough thing here. So you try to trap once quickly or you go straight for the foul is the, the big yep. predicament with eight seconds left. 8.6 to play. Tar Heels need a steal. Down by two. 87-85. Alabama gets it into Nelson and Ingram fouls him. So Nelson, who has been very good at the line, he's an 81% shooter and he is 8 of 9 tonight. 
He will have two shots. If he makes them both, it will be a two-possession game with just 7.6 to play. R.J. Davis, that miss makes him 4 of 20 in the ball game. We need to break 10 seconds. Station ID down the lines on the Tar Heel Sports Network. Two shots for Nelson. If he makes them both, it's going to be really hard for Carolina to win. 87-85 Alabama, 7.6 to play. First one by Nelson is good. He has been huge. 20 Three points for Nelson. He is one off his season high of 24. The transfer from North Dakota State, considered to be a great pickup in the transfer portal, has had a solid year, but nothing like this. He has been the dominant factor. Alabama's gone on a 6-0 run in the last minute 13. This free throw could ice it for Alabama. It is up, and it's good. 89-85. Heels down four, just 7.6 to play. Inbounds to R.J. Davis. He's going to sprint front side on the right. He'll need points in a hurry. Davis gets deep, gets it to Baycott. He'll score with 1.2 to go, and Carolina calls its last time out. It is now 89-87 Alabama. The Tar Heels take their last time out. They're going to have to get a steal and a miracle or a foul and a missed free throw and another miracle. Yeah, either way, you're, you're in a tough spot here. Trying to steal an easy basket, easy two there. Uh, Alabama did a great job. Didn't give R.J. the layup. Uh, ended up running up probably too much time off the clock. So now we're going to basically need a miracle to be able to pull this off. Tar Heels have been outscored 43-33 in this half. Just 10 of 39 from the field. 2 of 15 from 3. R.J. Davis has made at least one three-pointer in every game this season. But he is 0 of 9 from behind the arc tonight. Carolina led by 8 at halftime, but just could not score coming out of the halftime locker room. And Alabama got back in the game, and the tide has closed strong. And they're going to have all five players out of bounds to inbound it with 1.2 to go, run that football-style play where everybody's going to go off the baseline and out. You can't touch them on the baseline. So. Estrada, the inbounder. He gets the ball, still looking, still looking, and just got the timeout called before the five-second violation. Good Alabama defense has Carolina. one left, Z. Good defense by Carolina there, doing a great job staying matched up. Uh, you know, Sears tried to post up and get the ball, and they couldn't get him open. Talk about those threes for R.J. Davis. Every game this year, he's made one that actually goes back to the last five games of last year. He had made a three in 41 consecutive games. He has not made one tonight, just 1.2 to go. So Alabama has another timeout. Tar Heels are out. Possession arrow belongs to Alabama. Fouls both teams in the double bonus and have been for a while. I'd say we need a miracle, but I've seen a lot of miracles in the NCAA tournament. So Carolina doing a great job competing, not giving up, uh, hoping for a miracle here. Trimble will come in. So it's Davis, Trimble, Ryan, Withers, and Ingram. The five on the floor. This time, let's see, it will still be Estrada to throw it in. Alabama's going to have three players out near the timeline. Nelson will also be out of bounds on the baseline. Now he comes on to the court. Estrada to try and throw it in. Still looking, gets it to Nelson, and a quick foul. They, the clock's at 0 0.6. They may check that. But Nelson back to the stripe where he has two shots, and if he makes them both at this point clockwise, it'll just be almost impossible for the Tar Heels to come back. Nelson, 10 of 11 from the stripe tonight. And they will again check the clock. Yeah, this is where, this is where it gets really tough. I mean, you're basically hoping Nelson misses. Um, and if he doesn't, the game's over. If he misses one, you're going to have to get a desperation three. Uh, if he misses both... Um, it actually makes so the strategy here he's going to make the first if he misses the second because we don't have a timeout the game's going to be over so they've put it to 0 0.9 now after that review brought to you by your Honda dealers of the Carolinas take your Tariel tailgate to the next level of the new Honda see your Honda dealer of the Carolinas today so what they the strategy hopefully they don't do this but if he misses the second one here 
when we get the rebound, there's no way for us to stop the clock. So we'll yeah. basically have a desperation full court heave. If he yeah. makes the second one, we can throw the ball full court and have a chance at it. Yeah, Tariel's um, out of timeouts and down two, 89-87. So well, Nelson, hope Coach Oates doesn't know that. Nelson to the line. He's been good so far, so let's see what happens. He is 10 of 11 at the stripe tonight. 24 points, tying his season high. Alabama by two. First one by Nelson. Short. It remains a two-point game. So it'll be interesting if he tries to miss this or if he makes it, goes up three, gives yourself a chance. Tariels are sending Baycott down to their offensive half of the floor. Alabama does not have anybody to rebound. They're going to try to throw it over top to Baycott. Second free throw for Nelson is no good as well. Ingram tries the heave after the rebound. Nelson blocks it, and that is it. Carolina's terrific 2024 season comes to a disheartening close here in Los Angeles. The Tar Heel offense disappears in the second half where they go 10 of 39 from the field and 2 of 15, make it 2 of 16 on that last heave from three-point range. And without that offense, Alabama comes back from an eight-point halftime deficit to win it by two, 89-87. The Crimson Tide advances to just its second ever Elite Eight. They also went there in 2008. And they will face Clemson, making its second ever appearance in the round of eight. The Tigers advanced there in 1980. So a surprising regional final in the West and an absolute soul crusher for the Tar Heels as they fall to Alabama by two here in Los Angeles. Carolina's season has come to a close at 29-8. and eight. As they lose by two here in L.A., we'll take a break. Come back, stats, scores, thoughts, and comments from the Heels as well. Carolina's offense just disappears in the second half, and they lose it by two from Learfield. 